we have uh, we have a grand master of Armada, the 2017 world's champion, Norm Ware. Uh, he is a squadron savant. Absolutely. And uh, I, I don't know about you, Jordan, but I've played him a bunch of times. He, we play tests with him all the time in Toronto. He's since moved away. Um, but he, I've never seen another player play squadrons quite, uh, quite like Norm has. Absolutely. Uh, I had the pleasure of playing him last uh, Nationals. I did manage to eke out a 7-4 win, but that wasn't because of squadrons. Um, there was some magic demolisher luck that happened, but uh, I'm always impressed with how he plays squadrons. I've, you know, he's one of the people I go to for uh, advice and information about um, how the meta is evolving, and I have great conversations with him. So, uh, I, in fact, my list today, uh, today was very similar to what he has. Uh, now, I gotta say, I gotta give big props to Victor. Uh, Victor, I'm calling this the Victor special, Victor Sloan special, because I stole <laughs> it from you, and it's been shared around the GTA community. But uh, so, yeah, so this is Norm's list we're talking about, right? Right, but yeah. this is this is modeled. This is my list is very close to this. Uh, and again, Victor was the one who really pioneered it. So um, I have I've watched him play it spectacularly against two of uh, the Gallant Hell or uh, Gallant Haven lists yep. or whatever name you would like to call it. So, so. Uh, we're going into the beginning of the game. We have uh, <clears throat> it looks like Nick uh, ended up being a second player. Norm's list has a bid of 398 points versus Nick's 386. Uh, this is a, a list that's become a lot more popular lately. I've been seeing it a lot on regionals, uh, the recent nationals and Gen Con tournaments. Uh, the Akbar so-called Super Pickle with a lot of flotillas and a lot of uh, squadrons, especially the linchpin of the squadron game for, the, for Nick's list, we're talking about Nick's list now, is those uh, two VCXs. And the, uh, the bid is high for a list like this because they want to go second. Which is surprising. I would have been, if someone told me that last year someone wanted to go second with this list, I would have called them crazy. But here we are today. Um, the VCXs are a fantastic rebel squadron, um, throwing respectable AA dice of three, very tanky, and with relay and strategic uh, keywords on them, they provide such great token manipulation and such a boon to the uh, Rebel Squadron games. With the cheap flotillas allowing for cheap activations anywhere on the board, they are a fantastic Rebel Rebel Squadron. Sure, they do suffer from heavy, but when they're just there to help move your squadrons and maybe get into the fight, oh, they, they're just awesome at it. So you see on the screen now, the uh, objective chosen by Norm was Intel Sweep. Of course, Intel Sweep, uh, the objective, it's the uh, <clears throat> one of the blue objectives in uh, Nick's objective uh, repertoire. Uh, so <clears throat> after placing down obje uh, sorry obstacles, uh, starting with, uh, I believe starting with the second player, yeah, there's five five objective tokens going to be distributed. Starting with the second player, they're gonna they're gonna put an objective token down. Has to be at least distance five or greater from the each player's uh, edge, and then goes second player, then the first player, second player until all five tokens are. And I believe they also have to be further than distance three uh, from each token. So after that, then each ship, uh, sorry, each player has to choose one of their ships to be an objective ship. Uh, after that, so that objective ship, uh, at, during the course of the game, anytime the uh, that ship is within distance one of an objective token when it activates, it can pick that objective token up. At the end of the game, the player that has the most objective tokens gets 75 points added to their MLV. And then going uh, back to the VCXs. These objective tokens can be manipulated by the VCXs, where Norm does not unfortunately have a strategic squadron. So these VCXs might be able to steal something that Norm might be able to pick up. Now, again, with the second player advantage, you get to place three closers to yourself. So you are uh, more than likely to secure three, but there is, um, you know, the potential that he could steal another one from out of Nor Norm's nose and just make it that much more difficult for uh, Norm to complete that objective. Yeah, so, so strategic has really been a boon to, I think, second player lists. I know 
uh, before the release of that second Armada <laughs> Squadrons pack. Um, <clears throat> at least a lot of people in the Toronto area have just aggressively been baiting for first. And and again, like it's the, that's why Nick wants to go second. Not only do you have activation advantage, so you have five flotillas as well as your super pickle. And just to give a quick rundown as the upgrades on the uh, MC-80 Assault Cruiser with Admiral Akbar as Nick's commander, you have an intel officer. So that's that's really good for uh, ships, you know, that, that do one big punch per turn. Kind of, uh, you know, if, if you, normally if you only have one ship that does a big punch, then if your opponent has ECM or uh, you're not lucky enough to roll an accuracy, well, you just, you know, you use your brace, you use all your defense tokens, and you're just, you're laughing. But uh, the intel officer, you know, every turn forces a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, this was a big attack. Do you want to spend your one? Do you think you're going to be able to escape my arc uh, the following turn after you've burned your brace or burned your redirect? So uh, intel officer, I think, really vital in this list for Nick. Uh, also, you know, very tanky, this ship. It's got both reinforced blast doors and redundant shields as the defensive upgrades on the uh, MC-80 Assault Cruiser. Uh, redundant shields, the one that makes you regenerate one shield at the start of each turn. And reinforced blast doors at the start of the ship phase. At the start of the ship phase, you uh, can discard up to three damage cards from your ship. Now, going on to the offensive suite of that MC-80, you've got leading shots, XI-7 turbo lasers, and defiance. So uh, when it hits, it hits hard. Leading shots is there to make sure that the shots, the one shot that uh, list takes is uh, consistent. Absolutely, and again, don't forget Akbar's ability. Just adding those two red dice from long range with the XI-7s, the consistency, uh, even at long range, um, you're having your leading shots. Uh, Defiance would allow you to uh, use, add a blue dice and therefore turn on your leading shots, meaning your red dice become very, very consistent. And uh, I have had the, uh, I would say the, the honor to practice against this list, and I would, I, again, I was running something very similar to Norm, and I was terrified of it. Now, there are ways to beat it. Um, I did get managed and kill the pickle, and if you do kill the pickle, the game is probably over, but between redundant shields and blast doors, it's going to be incredibly difficult for squadrons to tear through there. Um, the con between, oh sorry, on top of that, there's gonna be comms net, uh, engineering tokens being thrown over there. Um, oh, sorry, we just got a little more information from the table. Uh, Norm has selected his Demolisher as the uh, Intel ship. Um, Demolisher uh, moves speed three, is, I'd say, rather maneuverable with navs, especially for an Imperial ship. Um, uh, just a sec. And, uh, Nick has picked a flotilla. Not that he's had much choices, but he's picked a flotilla. So we, uh, the flotilla again, very maneuverable, can move speed three. So these um, these tokens may be picked up very, very fast. Now, uh, sorry, just to go back to the pickle. The pickle again, lot uh, as we'd mentioned, very good defensively, very strong offensively. Norm has to be very careful with those positioning of his ships because even the even the um, Gazantes could potentially lose their scatter to an intel shot or just eat an accuracy and explode. So I am I am very curious. Just the deployment, I believe, is going to help make or break this game as both players have a lot of deployments and strong deployment is. Strong deployment has won and lost me games, and I, and I, <laughs> if people feel free to go back and review last year's world, or sorry, Canadians Nationals, I made mistakes and lost on deployment for sure. So it can make or break any game, and it, it's, again, th there's so many little games within Armada, the squadron mini game, the capital ship game, and the, even the deployment of asteroids and all that, it's, it's right. very... <laughs> Uh, I, what's the right word? Cerebral on how many levels you have to think to try and execute what you want to do with your list. So Norm, being really smart, just deploying that one uh, that one kind of throwaway flotilla there, deploying two of his uh, two of his Tie Fighters. Now I don't think we actually got into is, as to the uh, fighter component, which I think is the most important part of Norm's list here. Obviously, he's running Admiral Sloan as his commander. So uh, Norm's squadron contingent is uh, Rhymer. So Reimer's there to get that 
range advantage, uh, you know, when you're bombing ships kind of like as a way uh, in the past before his range got nerfed to uh, force enemy squadrons to come to you, right? Because you could just hang back, uh, pelt your opponent's ships from far away. Uh, usually, you know, especially against a large Imperial squadron ball, you generally want to play very conservative with your fighters, keep them within your AA bubble. But uh, what Reimer does is make them come out to meet you, which is like perfect, right? Because, you know, they come out, they usually you don't really care if Reimer lives or dies in the first exchange because then you're just going to dogpile with the rest of your Imperial squadrons. And uh, on top of that, uh, if they are low on squadrons, you are able to punish them very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Within, even within the second turn, you can start bombing their ships. The threat range, threat range on squadrons are very high, and Reimer just makes it even larger. So yeah, combined with Sloan, now you just have a bunch of cheap Tie fighters that basically, you know, they hit seventy. Uh, sorry, uh, six out of eight times on a blue die. Yeah. And then, then, then you have the reroll as well. Yes, absolutely. Right? And, and Sloan's ability on top of it. Now, I know squadrons have been a very big contention point in Armada for the past time, and I am very biased because I love squadrons. Uh, but I, I feel that they need to be in the game, and it's very thematic to have in there. So uh, if, if I sound biased against squadrons, and especially Imperial squadrons, it's because I am. I, I absolutely am. So, Norm, uh, so just continuing Norm's squadron contingent, we have... Uh, going after Reimer, we have Merrick Steel, three TIE Fighters, Howl Runner, Mahler Mythol, Saber Squadron, uh, Colonel Jendon, and then rounding it out, Black Squadron. So uh, Norm has been kind enough to uh, mark all his unique TIE Fighters with those little marker tokens. Uh, so, you know, it'll be a little bit easier to... We can't quite clearly see. Uh, we have some table audio, so uh, hopefully the two players will uh, verbalize which uh, ship is attacking which. Um, but uh, yeah, you see very classic deployment with Norm. You have one flotilla going one way, one flotilla going the other way. Then you have your fighter screen. Mm -hmm. Just uh, the, the purpose of you know having so many fighters, Norm does have 10 fighters in his squadron contingent, um, is you're allowed to just deploy those fighters, see where the enemy is deploying, and then usually the demolisher is the last thing you drop because that's your flanker, right? That's your hard hitter. You want to you wanna, um, take advantage of that weak flank that, you know, your opponent just doesn't know where you're going to go. Uh, so that's the, that's the idea behind deploying the way Norm has. Now, if I remember correctly, Norm will have 10 deployments and uh, Nick will have six from his ships. And then I forget the squadron numbers. He has uh, seven, ten, and ten as well. Yeah. So um, he might not be able to get that incredible demolisher flank, especially since he's going first. He made his first deployment, and Nick out kind of deploys him, which is when the last thing that's going to be um, deployed is potentially the pickle. Uh, it's hard to react to that now. Um, Norm has deployed his three flotillas in an interesting fa fashion. I'm, he is trying to... He did this against a, uh, the Gallant Haven, uh, very strong list that he in fact won worlds with, where he's looking like he's trying to split his flotillas up and potentially split the fighters up. Now, with both players having a relay, that might not happen. You might see a big fur ball in the middle, but I... Norm and I have discussed ways about, you know, splitting certain fighters off, allowing them to go chase down and maybe hunt some activations. So that we could potentially see that. So most of his TIE fighters have been deployed out on the field. I believe that is Sabre Squadron. Um, and at the top, I think that is... Oh, the Merrick is out on the field as well. So all his squadrons... Um, uh, sorry, all of his squadrons, uh, TIE Fighter Squadron, including, I guess, most of his uniques, as well as Saber and Merrick are out on the field. So I found, uh, in my play testing, that uh, the Jendon placement has been... Jendon and Reimer placement have been incredibly important, Jendon being the slowest squadron, but having the most impact. Okay, so Jendon's hidden nicely, yeah. tucked away. Usually Jendon is there to uh, double tap either with Merrick Steel or Saber Squadron, Sa yes. at least that's how I've been playing it. Yep. Uh, those are your two most powerful, like, Merrick Steel is there basically as like a fire spray with upside. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Saber Squadron has, has Snipe 4 and Swarm. So, uh, you know, there's some lists that have, uh, like for example, like one variation of the Super Pickle list, um, 
is, well, the squadron contingent is Jen Ors, a bunch of escorts, and Jen just sits in the middle of an escort bubble, you know, thinking she's all safe. So that's what Saber Squadron is there for, just to kind of come in and assassinate uh, an intel ship or a ship that's being protected by an escort bubble. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. That sort of thing. So, you know, those are your two primary <clears throat> Jenden targets. So for those people that don't know, Colonel Jenden, the Lambda Shuttle unique pilot, uh, he has an ability that uh, when the Jenden activates, instead of attacking, he can choose a squadron that's distance one to two away from him, and then that squadron can attack, uh, but not move. Yeah, and being able to tap uh, Saber twice, you can assassinate most double braces, especially when you're rolling six and five dice. You uh, really, like, it, it has allowed the assassination behind these huge escort balls. So I am, I was very pleased with Jendim. I could fly my, uh, the relay again. Relay two is just fantastic. I could fly my flotillas off, be able to relay. I protect Jendim and just try and win the squadron game. And, you know, um, it, it worked. I, I, I lost some of uh, the squadron battles a little bit because due to misplays, but I love this squadron ball. It is very strong. I, it's, it's going to suffer to the super pickle AA. For sure, the, those ties may evaporate, and even those flotillas. That is a lot of black dice being thrown at them. So Norm is going to have to re really watch out for the uh, AA screen that's coming his way. Now, let's talk about these Z's. Z's have been my bay. There is a quite crazy player that in our local meta, uh, Mr. McKenzie. Uh, he has pioneered Z's, and. I had initially thought, oh, these are cool throwaway squadrons. No, these have been my bait. Merrick Steele has died to two Zs. Really? Because, I mean, I've tried Zs, and I just I just thought they were worse TIE fighters. They, <clears throat> Maybe I didn't try them enough. No, I, Mer like they are potentially worse TIE fighters, or they are your bane. Yeah. Three red dice is can be scary. Well, now I will say that the variance on red dice, I mean, if you're lucky... I think <clears throat> you just play Z95s. Because I've seen a Z95, you know, so-called delay screen, absolutely tear up an opposing fireball when they're rolling accuracy, double hit, double hit. Um, you know, with the swarm reroll, you add Blount into the mix. Blount oh, is yeah, in Blount Nick's, is in uh, here. Yeah, Blount is, in, in fact, in Nick's list here. Uh, they can be uh, unpredictable. Yeah, I, they, but they are such a good delaying force. And I, you know... I'm not going to try to show too much bias in this cast because I do love my Imperials, but I think Zs are very comparable to Ties, possibly better. But, you know, I, again, I, I, I do have an Imperial bias. So, yeah. Um, what are the upgrades and variants of the Gladiator? Uh, both of them are the one version. So the Gladiator has, is Gladiator 1, and the VSD is also a VSD 1. Um, they, the upgrades. So the Gladi, <coughs> sorry, the uh, Victory Star Destroyer, it's the uh, VSD-1 with the black dice and the red dice. Uh, the upgrades on that, it's, it's just like a very lean carrier. Yes, so, yeah. 89 uh, points about. Yeah, 89 points. It has expanded hangar bays, has flight controllers. So the, the, main, um, <coughs> the main job of that ship is to just push squadrons around. Um, the, especially with the release of Sloan and the viability of TIE Swarms again because of her, uh, you want to, like, the Imperial Doctrine of overwhelming Alpha Strikes with your squadrons is is probably the best strategy when you're pushing imps around. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to activate a lot of fighters all at once. Uh, you have your Swarm Reroll, you have your extra blue dive from Flight Controllers. You know, that is the, I think, the major power behind Imperial Squadrons. So that's what you want to do. So on top of that, with the VSD carry, you have quad battery turrets. And the quad battery turrets is there simply to give that VSD a little bit of teeth. Because usually, you know, you don't have any dice modification. Um, you're only throwing three dice most of the time against another ship unless they're foolish enough to get close to you. So it's, uh, it's a way to kind of make it more than just an afterthought. And uh, we see here comes the super pickle. Yeah. So uh, it does look it's, like, actually, sorry to interrupt, yeah. uh, Jordan, but it, it does look like Norm also deployed his demolisher, and uh, one of the viewers actually asked about that. So the demolisher is a GSD-1, 
It has, of course, the demo title. Uh, Admiral Sloan is on that ship. Being the most nimble ship, it is the it has the ability to strike and run away, and uh, be a bit of a point sink. And it has uh, assault proton torpedoes. I know a lot of people have been favoring external racks uh, lately. Uh, it's a cheap upgrade, you know, it gives you a lot of firepower at once, but the problem with the GSD side arcs, uh, especially against larger ships that have braces or flotillas with scatter, is that adding two black dice isn't really going to do anything if you don't have a way of controlling the opponent's defense tokens. Yeah. And it, you could say, hey, Sloan can strip that brace, but you can't rely on that. And I found my gladiators were shooting a lot, and I was like, okay, I would have had one big attack and then... I, I triggered APTs a whole bunch of times. I, I felt that the APTs outperformed in, in this tournament alone. APTs outperformed. Now, uh, I just wanted to talk about Nick's deployment. He's really positioned his flotillas in a nice uh, cluster here. There's two down at the bottom here that are going to fly in a formation. Unfortunately, I think they might run into that VSD, um, depending how they move. The objective uh, ship is the one right in the middle. Yep. Oh. Um, the objective ship is in the middle, and the two other flotillas are moving in there. So there'll be a small little dance. The, the initial movements, I feel, have to be done a little properly, or you're going to have ramming. But once you uh, get out of there, then those things may be spamming uh, squadron commands the whole game, and we're going to have a big furball of Vs. Anyway, um, both players are ready. Uh, both players have, uh, are going to be starting to make their commands soon. Yeah, so remember, Norm is first player. He's going to get the first activation. Now, uh, based on the arrangement of Nick's uh, fleet here, what he's going to try to do, he's got two uh, strategic squadrons. He's probably going to try to bring at least two of them towards his objective ship, at least in the path of it. He just has to be careful of bringing his, uh, especially his VCXs, too far afield. Uh, if he does do that, then he risks uh, he risks having those VCX VCXs being torn apart by Norm's squadrons. Now he might Norm. Uh, this might be a bit of a bait thing for for Norm uh, because Nick does have eight Z95s, and while they will melt against uh, an Alpha Strike, if you don't kill enough of Maybe. them. Maybe. Well, there, there is something in play called jamming fields, and that we haven't true. talked about that. Yes. I am not sure where the jamming field is on... Both sides actually carry a jamming field. Now, jamming field is a rather interesting card as it, you know, we, uh, it has recently come in as squadrons have become a little more uh, prevalent in the meta. There are... People have been concerned about, oh, I just lose all my squadrons, I die. But it, I don't like squadrons. I don't want to bring a whole bunch of squadrons. Now, jamming fields protect your squadrons uh, in range two uh, and potentially hurt your squadrons in terms of their offensive capabilities. Uh, they will, at range one to two, any sh squadron that is attacked or being attacked will have that attack obstructed, meaning the opponent will lose a die. Now, in this, what this potentially means, it's just cutting into the... Uh, cutting into the potential offense that Norm's going to throw out. Now, don't get me wrong. Norm is going to be throwing out five, potentially six, or anywhere between four to six dives with his big alpha strikes. However, the more you take away from those dice, the potential that you might not kill a Z. If you don't kill a Z, well, you're statistically, you're probably going to kill a Z. But with the jamming field, that, that chance just drops down just enough that, that Z might live an extra turn. Now, there is Mauler that could come and clean up that one health, and there, there are a lot of little variables that Norm can push to make sure the Zs die, but with a little bit of bad luck, those Zs could screen just long enough to protect, the, uh, protect his capital ships. And in turn, Z's potential damage could go from zero up to six, and that's, all over, that's crazy variance. It's all over the place. Um, I am personally concerned for... Uh, Merrick Steele, because he has known to be allergic to Z95s in every single of my <laughs> game. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so it, it's good. the squadron's going to be interesting with the placement of these jamming fields, and we could see this dragged out for much longer. I am going to s 
potentially say Norm is going to crush through those Zs, but it may take way too long. So this is Norm, he just activated his VSD, did a concentrate fire command, banked the token. Uh, now he's going to just go ahead and move his ship. Traveling at speed 2, I believe, is going to overlap that Saber Squadron. Uh, of course, Nick is going to be able to place that wherever he wants around the VSD. Uh, it being an interceptor, I don't think it matters at all. Especially with Snipe, because being the extra two range on your attack, you could be across, well, not halfway across the board, but you could be very, very far away and still impact the fight. Yep. So, not that big of a deal. Now, the plan with the VSD, I am... I don't know if it's going to get into the fight because we haven't talked about engine techs on that on uh, the pickle, and that thing surprisingly will dance with that. It's yes. scare three movement with a lot of being, especially when he's navigating, will be very scary. Yeah. So uh, especially with it getting past uh, tokens to it, it can consistently do that. So that pickle, if if anyone's played it without engine techs. You might be like, oh, this is so slow, but I got huge arcs, so I'm fine. But this is, this again, it's terrifying. All of a sudden, you could be facing a broadside and you not not even being prepared yeah. for it. Um, so first off, Nick is going to be doing the flotilla dance, yep. getting all these activations <coughs> out of the way, moving tokens between each other with comms net, uh, potentially activating some squadrons, getting those VCXs, grabbing those tokens. Right. Uh, we'll see with the other ones. And... Now we're, we're in the first, I'm going to say, maybe one or two turns of jockeying for position. The pickle's going to want to be able to get in and force the opponent into its arc. It's going to be able to do that as it's activating last. Norm is going to have to be very, very careful. The gladiator, gladiator can die in I think, one I think, shot. I think you're a bit too enthusiastic. I think I know, but... Yeah, we're gonna have to. Oh, yeah, so the, the room's empty up quite a bit, okay. so we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to tone it down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna. Well, we're not gonna quite. We're not gonna be quite at the level of the whisper that we did last year. Yeah. But uh, well, yeah. Okay. So. We have, uh, starting in a bit. Should, oh, perfect. Okay. We're gonna have some uh, cloud cover. Worst case scenario, we can just like blast a Star Wars theme at this future match. Team. Yeah. And then we'll just get copyright yeah. claims on our videos. But oh yeah. No, no, no. They, we. They won't hear it on stream. They will hear it. Yeah. Ah. Anything here, anything in between, will go both. Anyway. Okay. So yeah, I, I'm getting a little excited. I love, I really love this game. So I will tone yeah. it down. So don't spoil everything and give away strategies. But yeah. Anyway. Um, so this Norm's activating one of his uh, his flotillas. I think it's the objective ship. I believe the objective ship was demo. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You yeah. can. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. There's that little blue like token thing. Yeah that they have over there. Yeah. Number four flotilla for Nick is his objective uh, flotilla. So I think uh, I think uh, our stream manager, Travis, is going to try to get uh, a couple of numbers up just so we can track the movement of the objective ships and make it a little bit easier to follow what's going on. And, uh, but... Uh, yeah. So again, we were doing the dance of the flotillas, the early activations, again, jockeying for position, trying to basically make the opponent spend all their activations. Now, I, I believe Norm's flotillas are just going to be flying away um, as they basically have global range for what they can do between um, relay, so they can move their squadrons, as well as uh, Hondo, which is an interesting card that came out in the most recent yep. wave. And, and Nick Brown has uh, Hondo on his Nick has, In Nick fact, has Hondo. that's the one he's active on. Nick, they both have Hondo. Oh, Hondo. <laughs> Hondo is a two-point card of just absolute value. Um, being able to give two different ships two different command tokens and right. then giving your opponent the other two oh. command tokens. Sorry to interrupt. This is spicy. He actually activated a flotilla with the squadron command using it this turn. Uh, you know, not, not uh, something you see often, um, the first turn squadron activation, instead usually opting to bank the token, but moves Jendon into the rock, you know, kind of protect him from being engaged and mm -hmm. uh, uh, that obstructed shot. That Yeah. Hit. Now, um, if it is interesting, however, Norm's list, uh, if, if the gladiator does do some squadron commands, which it may, um, there are potentially, I believe, 12 squadron activations right. and uh, only 10 squadrons. So they could be wasted, it could be not. But yeah, putting Jendon out there in a really safe spot, the relay is going to be able to affect 
Yeah. Uh, I, obviously, I don't have a ruler, but I'm going to estimate anywhere around those objective tokens. Right. Jendon is going to be able to relay, and uh, Jendon's secondary ability allowing double tap is a distance of two, which I, you know, if you, if anybody has great eyesight, could imagine just a couple inches in from those tokens. So this again. Squadron's providing a huge threat field there. Right. Now. So uh, now we just, so as we mentioned before, the uh, the two numbered ships that you see on the screen are the, in fact the objective ships for this, uh, for this objective. And uh, just to bring it up again, just to remind everybody that the objective is indeed Intel Sweep. Uh, so the person with the most objective tokens at the end of the game gets a additional 75 points to their final score. <coughs> Uh, Grimfleen Slayer, this is not Star Trek. If you want to watch Star Trek, I do believe there is a uh, a new series premiering this Sunday. I heard. Tonight, actually. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> yeah. um, so we've got uh, Norm again activating some more squadrons. Or sorry, uh, Nick activating some squadrons. He, I believe he's moving some v uh, VCXs. And this is VCX is going to start bringing in the strategic value. Yeah, pulling those uh, objective tokens closer to his objective ship. Yep. Uh, because they do have to be within distance one of that objective ship when it activates in order to pick it up. And there you go. There's a free <coughs> free token. Turn one. Amazing. Man, I think strategic has really like you. You can't just willy nilly throw whatever blue objective into your list anymore. Uh, you know, but before I remember, dangerous territory used to be a very popular objective. You know, just because it was the. <coughs> Yeah, sorry, that's just uh, the Imperial Assault uh, top four, I think. Yeah, the top, they're going into the final match as well. So we're going to get a little bit of sound cover, I think, uh, just to shield ourselves from the players. Mm -hmm. But uh, going back to the game, Nick's activated his second VCX, brought another objective token. So what he's probably going to do, he hasn't activated his objective ship left yet. So he's going to activate his objective ship this turn, pick up one of the tokens, move forward one or two, and then next turn pick up the second objective token. Mm -hmm. Now, I do not believe Norm's squadrons, maybe Merrick, maybe Merrick will be able to engage one of those VCXs. Right. Now, one thing I, I didn't mention, uh, the, the ship that uh, you see on the bottom, the Gazanti that you see on the bottom left of the screen is, in fact, a vector title Gazanti. So that means ah, yes. that every squadron he activates can go one extra... Uh, distance than its regular activation. I believe Vector's already activated, though. No, no, but that's oh, what he put the Saber Squadron and Jen did with. Got it. So, I indeed, next turn, perhaps, <clears throat> well, could use Merrick's uh, Vector's title only affects uh, things that are not heavy, so Jen uh, really didn't quite get much of, out of it, okay. but he has a significant number of TIE Fighters, meaning they can go speed 5. See, Jordan, that's why I have you here on commentary yeah, with me. I need somebody who knows what he's talking about. I, look, <laughs> I get lucky, I borrow people's list and practice them. I, I I am nothing but a, you know, just someone who's just learning from other people. So don't 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 pretend like I'm the be all and end all. I'm just I'm I'm happy to be here. Anyway, um, so the first objective token has gone down, and he's going to be moving it toward as we discussed towards the other um, other objective token. Now, Victor was mentioning Vector. Vector is very interesting title and I will I am unhappy to say that I got punished by it last year I mis yeah. misread how far certain squadrons can move speed 4 and speed 5 obviously very different and engagement just adding that extra little range and I forgot about vector and all of a sudden I had some powerful squadrons in my face that I was like oh I don't know what's going on how they got there um, so this is going to be an experience thing if Nick can remember about Vector. If Nick can kind of predict this, he might be able to mitigate mitigate the potential um, surprise factor of Vector, because Vector's ability will work through work through relay, as well as most of the other activating squadrons' abilities. So, I, I do not believe those Tie Fighters right now will be able to jump on the VCXs or any of his squadrons this turn, especially since Vector has already been activated. But definitely next turn, there is going to be, I feel, there is going to be a bit of a squadron furball. Now, that being said, he is flying potentially flying into a ton of AA from the uh, flotillas. Or he could potentially do that, but I 
Norm is a strong enough player just to understand the ranges of those flotillas and probably play around them. So this this is all, this is really coming down to a really big experience thing and both of these players very they're here at this table. They know what they're doing. They didn't get here by chance. Norm had a very big slog of games. I watched both of them when I finished mine and so did Nick. So these guys are experienced. They know what they're doing. They understand this game. One might say they're some of the best players in Canada currently. So this is uh, Norm activating his demo now. Uh, I think he's, looks like he's turning, turning away from the pickle. And he might, what do you, he's doing a hard two. So we're gonna change camera angles, just see if he's. Could, oh, oh, that overlapped. He bumped his flotilla. That might have actually been intentional. Uh, he does not want that demo to get anywhere near the uh, pick. So one might say that might have been a mistake, but I'm pretty sure that was rather calculated. He could he could have not activated his flotilla earlier and let his demo move. So he is trying to get away from that pickle. But again, speed three, it, it's hard to run. So, a very interesting play. Now, I have definitely bumped things by accident in my games. I don't know about you. you sometimes, it, yeah. sometimes it's turned out for the best, sometimes it hasn't. You think that was by accident? No, I don't think that was No, no, absolutely not. I do not think that was by accident. Right. I think that was fully intentional, especially because he activated first. Yeah, but yeah. It, Norm doesn't make those types of mistakes. No, he does not. Sorry, I apologize if I wasn't clear. Oh, no, no, that's yeah. fine. I, yeah. I had, had my attention distracted for a second. But like the, the, those sorts of things, you know, like um, I feel like when a player first learns about fortressing and X-Wing, for example, uh, it's like these little like with little tricks where you're like, well, normally you're not supposed to run into your own ship. That's crazy. Right. Why would you want to do that? Uh, but, you know, it, by, by uh, ramming into your own ship, another thing Norm really likes doing is uh, putting his ships to speed zero, uh, which is, you know, normally bad. Just because you know, if you're if you're out activated, you could just get you, you won't have access to any of your defense tokens here at speed zero. But uh, it, it's really good at kind of throwing off your opponent's math, thinking, oh, you know, he's going at a certain speed by turn X, he's going to be here, yeah. intercepting. Yeah. And and that messes with big ship gameplay because you're setting your yes. activation well in advance, and you you really got to plan that stuff out. But again, really top tier players, you know, it, it takes a lot to surprise them. Right. So and being and again having the ability also to adapt and changing changing battlefield and stuff. Again, I I cannot speak to the praise of both of these players having played both of them. They yep. know what they're doing and they can adapt. So it's going to come down to the tiny little tiny little things are going to make and break this game that we may even miss. But these guys again highest praises for what they're doing out here. So uh, Norm has finished all of his movements. Um, so he, again, he, it's going to be really scary because this pickle is going to be able to dance and get his positioning that he wants. Um, I believe there's uh, most of the all the flotillas have gone. I think there might be one flotilla that has not gone. But, as there's five, but the movement right now is. A, l a little irrelevant on what activates now since Norm has finished everything. Yeah. I think what's really going to be interesting is uh, how Norm activates his squad, uh, how Norm moves his squadrons in the squadron phase, uh, what sort of trap he's going to set up for his opponent. So Nick did a, he did a navigate there, I think. It's yes. a hard, hard, hard one, turn. turn into the side. Uh, maybe, you know, I think he originally, I think he was going to do a much wider turn, but he didn't really anticipate what mm. uh, Norm was going to do with his demo there. Yeah. Now, I... So my thoughts for what's going to be happening, especially with ComsNet, is um, Nick is going to be spending a lot of navigations for the, this turn, possibly the next turn. Yeah. Um, players just right now pointing out where jamming fields are, as again I had mentioned, it might become important. But uh, as you get later into the game, the, the pickle is going to be wanting to regen shield. So I, I am going to predict you're going to see a lot of engineering tokens, maybe a nav thrown in here too if it gets close to the board, but just engineering tokens just to keep that thing alive. And between, with a token, six engineering points, and with his uh, redundant shields, just pulling stuff up, 
Wow, that's yeah. going to be I, tough I, to punch. I think it's in Norm's best interest to avoid the Apicola entirely. Like, I if don't he think. Can. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. VST is on the opposite end of the board. The Demolisher is not, even with a triple tap, is not going to be able to take out an Akbar. And he's out activated anyway with an engine tech Akbar yeah. Super Pickle. So I think Norm's best, uh, best hope is to dive into the middle of those flotillas, uh, take some of them out win the squadron war. Now, Norm, um, he was at uh, the Gen Con North American Championship uh, earlier this year. He made top four. Uh, he ended up losing against a variant of this list, uh, against his arch, his so-called arch nemesis, Jeff Beerwin, uh, who's mm -hmm. running a very similar list. Um, his his plan usually against these types of lists, uh, you would just, like, like I was saying earlier, you just ignore the uh, MC-80. You can't kill it. Uh, even if you do kill it, you may pay dearly for it. What you, the advantage you do have is that your squadrons are vastly superior to almost anything that these types of lists bring to the table. So you just try to wipe out their squadrons while losing as little of yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try to take out a flotilla or two. Try to deny the opponent their objective and yep. then just run away. Yep. Now, um, I, I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't hear too much about what happened there. But I will. I've got to say, it's going to be very. They could, given the positioning right now, it might be demo might be able to get away from a speed three pickle. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to see how that plays yep. out. I I, I I totally agree with what Norm's plan is, and winning the squadron game might be able to do that. But again, Z 95s screening variants. Right. And he's, he's keeping him close to his AA bubble. That's a smart play, right? Keep him close to your jamming field ship. Keep him close to your AA bubble. Uh, I will note that Norm, uh, so the, the three squadrons you see in front of you, Saber Squadron, uh, I believe that's Hal Runner or Mahler Mithil. It's hard to tell, but the, the squadron with the, the unique squadron with the special token in, the, in that group of three is a black squadron. Yep. And Drasnada, yeah, we, we totally agree with that. Yep. It's, it's going to come down to pretty much I 100% agree with that now it's again it's just Z's are Z's have been magic some days and uh, that pickle if you're not careful I again yep. Norm is very careful but sometimes you can't avoid that incredible arc it is it is okay. now I will say I have played this I have played this Akbar list uh, before some variants of this list before you have to actually be um, you, you can't you can't do too wide of a turn when you're trying to do the the so-called toilet bowl strategy mm -hmm. uh, because there are, there are there have been a lot of times even as first player with that MC80 uh, I just simply don't have enough turns to finish off something okay and then when you get into a situation where uh, you know Akbar with the engine text goes at speed three uh, demo goes at speed three. If you get into a situation where your opponent is then running away from you, especially as first player, yes, uh, you're just like, you, you just won't be able to catch it in time to catch. Absolutely, it. yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, yeah. Well, it's just going to come down to how this plays out, but for sure. And I think the chat agrees with us too. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's up to it's it, it's yet to be seen if uh, you know that uh, the MC80 does get enough turns to be relevant. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, I think the smart thing to do in this case is just to avoid that that MCA altogether. Yeah. Now, um, I, if he is spamming uh, navigations, there is the potential for the MC-80 to come around and then just start laying flak down onto those TIE fighters. That is true. And two blue dice as... With leading shots. That's, that's leading a shots, little yeah. secret that not a lot of people know nope. about leading shots. You can use it on an AA dice. Yeah. So, uh, that... This could come down to, well, I, I don't want to predict too much because we've made a bunch of predictions now, right. and, and I don't want to be called out every single time I'm for sure, on yeah, yeah. But the, the potential for the, the AA to come around if Demo and the VSD doesn't do not engage, right? That, that could be a huge factor. Again, firing at every single thing, every single squadron, they, yeah, it could be very scary for Norm. As, as one health, um, sorry, potentially having most of your squadrons Reduced down to one health. Yeah, that makes me nervous. And, and that, that was one of the big things about TIE Fighters that have always been a problem. Has been it, If they don't die to squadrons, they might just die to A. And look, like Norm's playing this smart. That one, that one uh, GR-75 that's moving away from the herd, um, 
He's, he's lining up the Rhymer to take advantage of that uh, extra range mm -hmm. on, on all anti-ship dice within distance one yes. of that ship. Yep. And Merrick Steele has been... I have uh, found that he's very suitable at stripping away, with especially with Slump, stripping away that... Uh, and in gen, and stripping away right. the uh, scatter, making it incredibly vulnerable to everything else. So... So I think this is Norm just checking to see, well, you know, if Nick decides to activate any of his Zeds next turn, he was using a distance four ruler. That's kind of a little rough way to gauge how far the Zed can move and its shooting distance altogether mm -hmm. in one. Yeah. It's a little bit less than, than actually doing a move because the distance one shooting as well as the distance one moving has to be taken into account. Yes, the, the range one it. is yeah. just, just millimeters, centimeters, centimeters, centimeters longer than... Uh, the other yeah movements. it's so the the distance one is the longest segment distance two is the shortest segment, and then the rest should be equal to each other okay yeah yes so yeah now and again the distance two is going to be relevant for uh, saber squadron snipe and yeah it, it's the fur ball might be coming very soon so it looks like we're going into round two uh, close players going back to dials uh, so th I think uh, this may be the round where the fighters engage. Uh, Norm might hold back one more turn because he's seeing how Nick is being really conservative with his fighters. Uh, or perhaps, I mean, with, with, those, with those Zs hanging in the back, uh, it is possible for, for Norm to sort of divide and conquer. Yes. Um, those two VCXs are, you know, kind of ripe for the picking, I feel. Especially yeah. with Saber Squadron being in that group just in front of the VSD. Uh, you can double tap with Jendin, just mm -hmm. snipe, mm -hmm. and now you've effectively um, gotten rid of... Well, now your flotillas can only command one squadron oh, from, yeah. from afar. Uh, again, you're just being, uh, going back to the whole jamming field and the eight hull on those VCXs, VCXs it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but a, you know, a good roll could... Two good rolls could wipe out a VCX. For sure, yeah. yeah. So, um, he might even actually just sacrifice a TIE Fighter in, so the Swarm you roll as well, uh, for your uh, Saber Squadrons. So. Okay, looks like they're ready to go. Uh, I think Norm's still programming one of his, perhaps it's Demolisher. I don't think I don't think you want to bump a second time. I think, I think now is the turn where you turn in. Yeah. Uh, Force, force Nick to give chase with his pickle. Uh, the problem is if you get too close to the Akbar, you're forced to kind of activate that demo first for the rest yeah. of the game, as long as that thing's in range. I believe uh, Norm's demo is still only going uh, speed two at the moment, but yep. could potentially jump up to speed three at any with any order. Uh, there's some little bit of background noise. I couldn't quite hear what Norm was doing, so try and. I think. So it looks like a Hondo. Ah, yeah. the Hondo. Okay, so uh, Norm's Hondo got popped. He will take a squadron and a navigate token to place amongst his ships. That means Nick gets one engineering and one concentrate fire token to distribute amongst his ships. So that's uh, really good because you know Nick's been already has a engineering commit or sorry engineering token on the MCAD, so it's wasted really on any other ship. Yep. And concentrate fire. Well, if Norm's planning on never being an arc of that ship, well then the concentrate fire token is also not going to do anything. Who knows? It could come into the AA game. Oh, that's that true. Point. I'm just I'm like yeah. I'm really stretching. Yeah. Oh, and uh, probably the right decision putting that engineering token on that one uh, flotilla that looks slightly out of position. Oh, Norm checking for long range. Looks like it. Yep. And, and I think he might even have quad battery turrets here. Yeah, here comes oh, here the VSD the activation. And it's a squadron command. He's going to use it. So hopefully he moves all the squadrons in front of him. I can only imagine those squadrons in yep. front of him are moving. Total. Yeah. So Norm is using the squadron command on that VSD. Uh, he's also using the token. So that's five activations. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be four activations because of expanded hangar bays plus the squadron token. Yeah. So I think this might just be. I think he's going to send Rhymer in first, perhaps. Uh, he's still deciding. There's, start the bombing. There's ten choices. 
Really, there's ten choices. There's so many things to choose. So many, so many toys to play with. Um, yep, Rhymer. Yeah, I mean, he's he's trying to, you know, he, he's trying, I think, to take it out with five activations. I mean, with uh, with Sloane's ability to to spend that scatter token, mm -hmm. uh, you can strip that scatter token. Hopefully, do a bunch of damage. Try to get rid of the scatter First token roll of the game. The SD activates. Uh, it looks like one hit. One hit. Yep, one hit yeah, to the side. I mean, no need to uh, to spend it yet. So that's the first squadron activation. Here comes Merrick Steel. Nope. Yep, Merrick. Yep. No, no, you gotta get a little bit closer. I think. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And then to get that, to get that uh, Rhymer bubble there. And you can see the uh, chest rolls coming into play, making sure he doesn't remove that hand. Yeah. That almost uh, messed up a couple of my games today, where I was like, I'm going to set it. Right. Like, wait, 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 wait. Okay. So. Yep. So Norm is going to uh, re-roll with Merrick's and for. So. Uh, so he uh, apparently got an accuracy off of uh, the re-roll. Re-roll. So yeah. Sloan is spending it to spend the scatter, scatter. giving, making uh, Nick unable to use it and exhausting it. And then he takes a crit too. It so the, yeah, crit was capacitor failure. Yeah, and yep. it's not really that all that relevant on a flotilla, but it's uh, what capacitor failure is, is when a hull zone has no remaining shields, you can't recharge shields there, you can't move shields to it, you can't redirect from it. Mm -hmm. um, so not all that relevant for a flotilla. Uh, but still, that's uh, one hull damage done to the flotilla. So here's a relay activation as his third activation. So one of two. So he's going to relay his own Jonas. And he's going to move into distance two of Merrick. So Demerick can basically double tap. Yeah. Okay. So here's a roll. So it looks like accuracy got rolled again. And, and then Merrick's going to change that there. Yeah, so goodbye. Yep, goodbye. Scatter, and here's another crit. Like this is this is why Merrick is oh thrust control malfunction. Do you remember what that is? Uh, oh, the, the last uh, yaw adjustable yaw uh, is, is minus one. Yeah. one. Yeah. So now it's just a dumb fire missile. <laughs> so uh, now there's two two hull damage on that flotilla. So like Merrick is insane. Yeah, with, I uh, with Sloan. Sloan. Like, it, it is a risk-free reroll when you reroll the first Absolutely, absolutely. Now, of course, I didn't place as well. <laughs> I would have killed a lot more flotillas, but Merrick wasn't, Merrick and Sloan weren't cooperating oh, as well okay. today. Now, again. They were having a lover spat. Oh, yeah. But, you know, that's in the past. And, again, I'm just, I'm really just yeah. joking. I, I think uh, that it, it, not only it's great for going after almost every ship in the game except maybe right. an MC-30 because most ships have one token you want to get rid of. One to big token. Um, Norm deciding what to do now. So this is his fourth activation, I think. Yes, he's uh, Jendon, uh, Reimer, and Merrick. Jendon double-tapping Merrick as well. Yeah, so, so this is Saber Squadron coming in. The snipe ship. Okay, so now... We have to make sure Norm remembers the jamming field is in effect. Yeah, there you five go. Dice, Nick yep. being helpful, saying that, yes, there is a jamming field there. So five dice is yep. still pretty scary. Yeah, and it is. Ooh, can't tell. I think that was two hits? Yeah. Two hits. So uh, five dice because um, flight controllers as well as Howl Runners. So yeah. it would have been six, but uh, Jam it's jamming field. So again, eight hull. It's down to six hull. It's gonna get some value for a turn or two yeah i'm i'm hoping there is a bunch of uh oh no i don't know if nix z's can reach so this is how runner activating yeah. and now you're now this is this is quite smart he's using how runner uh basically to lock down both vcx's so they can't move away and use their strategic mm -hmm. kind of forcing norm to come in with, sorry, he's forcing Nick to come in with his uh, wow. Zs. Zs only have a movement of three, and there's yep. no, no... Oh, they attack first. Yep, so this is Howl Runner's attack. Two damage. Uh, 
of course, it's an, it would, yeah, it would normally, yeah, fourth hell from any. Yeah. Normally, would have been four attack, just because of the flight controllers again, yeah. the jamming fields. So two two things quickly. Uh, wait, first, the attack. Did you not get quads? I think I think the VSD was going at speed two. Oh, okay. And the yeah, yeah flotilla oh, was going VSD, at speed two. Pickle, yeah. or sorry, the first casualty. Now, two two minor things right now. As a squadron player, I, I was curious about. I don't know if those uh, Zs can reach Howl Runner. It's hard to tell from this angle. They only go speed three, so potentially. But there, this is a really small thing that may have affected it. Norm could have moved his uh, Howl Runner in first to engage both of those uh, both of those VCXs. Then moving in with Swarm, or sorry, moving in with uh, Saber to get the Swarm value. Again, it's one reroll. It, it, it is a little minor, but sometimes these things make or break. So just a, just a little minor optimization thing. Again, we're sitting uh, back here. I'm rested, relaxed, and I don't have a panic of, and neither of us right, have a right. panic. But these are just little optimization, <laughs> optimization things that could affect people in the long run. Whether it'll affect this yep. game, uh, one damage, you never know. But so I, I just wanted to mention that uh, Norm's up 20 points because the flotilla that just died was the Hondo flotilla. Oh, it was the Hondo. Yeah. And he didn't get the Hondo value. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Yes, I know. Uh, one, one tear was shed. The, the, I guess the clone Hondo. The fake Hondo. Imposter Hondo. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Norm, I... Norm really now I think is lock, going to be start locking down the squadron game again. Variances on the bees yeah. is incredibly crazy. I mean, I mean the, the ball is now in Norm's court. Now, now uh, the the thing is, uh, Norm's uh, flotilla. I believe it's the Hondo flotilla, the one that got bumped by the demolisher. Mm -hmm. That thing is probably just going to get smeared by the MC30 at some point. MC80. MC80. Sorry, the yeah. MC80 at some point. But uh, that's it. Yeah. Just as scary. Yeah, and and remember, this is the final table. It doesn't matter how much you win by; you just gotta win. Mm -hmm. So uh, it pays to be conservative here. Yeah, oh. Absolutely. Oh, uh, I'm not sure what happened. Just to probably drop big, but yeah. So this is looks like uh, the VCXs uh, VCX are shooting at Hellrunner. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there was a squadron activation. Yeah. So the second attack was one damage. Of course, VCX is only sh throwing two dice lose. because of that jamming field. <laughs> um, I can't. Did he get an accuracy that second attack? Uh, I think he's dis. Uh, he hasn't. Unfortunately, yeah, he hasn't had, spent his tokens on yeah. uh, Howl. So looks like he's just going to take one damage. Yeah, I think it. I think it is indeed one damage there. Um, potentially. Yeah, there he goes for the token. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He just grabbed it. So this one the. Scatter has been spent. Now, I believe Howl might be in range of two uh, two flotillas. So they could, she could potentially eat two black dice here, or one being potentially scattered. Uh, well, one is going if one might have to be scattered. Right. Lose it, burning your scatter, or. I guess those Zs could also engage her. Nick's probably going to hold off on those Zs just to see more of how the squadron... Because I can only imagine those flotillas have squadrons queued up. Right. And, and unlikely the demo, but you never know. Oh, demo started at... Norm just mentioned demo was started at 3 and then dropped to 1. Yeah, oh. with a nav command and with a token. With a nav I command, that was... Yeah, yeah. so... That demo is sitting tight for the meantime. Maybe, it might I believe it's going to have to seriously pick up some speed with the next two turns, or that pickle's going to be on top of it very quickly. Uh, they may be maneuverable at high speeds, but speed three is is covers a lot more distance than speed yep. one. It's simple math. So, <coughs> so we're just having. Uh, Nick just measuring out some potential attack ranges of all his squadrons, just trying to plan out yeah. and predict. I think he's just still trying to decide. So he did activate uh, two squadrons with that, the uh, the GR-75 that he's yeah. about to move there. And I think he's just trying to decide how far to move it. He needs to clear some space so that the objective ship behind it can then uh, move on to the objective token and pick it up. So 
Right now, I Nick, I believe, has two objective tokens. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's yeah. I. Who? Comms then full tilt. Oh. So yeah, the comms net, uh, comms net goes anti. He just activated there, passed a navigate token to the demo. Oh okay, so the demo might I, prediction demo might have a squadron command queued up, <laughs> maybe. Um, <coughs> but yeah, getting now that there's a uh, nav token on demo, demo can probably get out of range of that pickle. And um, as has been discussed in the chat, that. Deployment may have just made or break broke this game. But the, and again, we're 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 yeah. way into the future here. Way into the future. Yeah, it's still turn two. A lot of things can happen. But as any Armada player knows, you predict yeah. the worst because that might happen to you. Yeah. Okay, so Nick just act activated his objective ship. His command was the squadron command, so that's going to be two squadron activations. He'll be able to do. Uh, uh, he's moving two squadrons, so one of. His choices are his Z's or his Z Ace Blount, and I am not <coughs> sure where Blount is. Um, but uh, those Z's are going to be rolling in. Now, they are in the jamming field. If they're going after Howl Runner, they are in the jamming field, so they're only going to get two red dice. Now, they right. do have Swarm, so potential reroll is great, but. That, that I do want to point out that the Lieutenant Blount uh, on your screen right now, it is. If you look at the two black Z95s that are sort of like at the top of the screen. It's the bottom one okay. of the two. I think that's Lieutenant Blount there. So Blount is in position, potentially in position. He has range one, I believe, to uh, help yep. him with rerolls. So these Zs get uh, with between Swarm and Blount, that's two rerolls on red dice. And right. Rerolls make red dice work. So Now, this is uh, the squadron game coming into play. A lot of little, little decisions. Positioning is yep. so, so key. Now, I, I will say, um, generally, uh, sorry, Michael Taglioni, I think uh, when we do split up this video into its own video, when we upload it to our VTTV Live YouTube channel, I will have links to both lists posted up. Uh, but uh, just, again, just to remind people, the... We're looking at uh, Norm. He's playing a very popular in Toronto, at least Sloan VSD demo, uh, full 134 points of fighters. Um, so you have the VSD, you have the demo, and your fighters is your major attack vectors. And then uh, Nick is playing a variant of a very popular Akbar Super Pickle list. So it's a Christmas tree of an MC80, loaded to the gills with lots of defensive and offensive upgrades. Uh, five flotillas, so activation Ooh. advantage is the name of the game. Oh, there's two hits already. And inaccuracy, oh my god. Yep, brace. <coughs> this is crazy. Okay, again, this is just the huge variances, yes. and I'm always on the receiving ends of this oh, kind of sure, stuff from yeah. my scatter races. The salt is showing a little, but... I, I can't remember the last time my scatter races ever actually scattered anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh... But scattering red dice? Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, man. Anyway, um, so that was just one. I believe he has another one coming in there, and I believe this is... I Which... I'm not sure which... Um, this is the objective ship that's activating. Activated, that's so activating the two squadrons. So one squadron has been activated, yeah. and now Nick's trying to get his second Z95 into this the fight This could be here. the end of Howl Runner. Even if he doesn't roll, yep. he needs to roll a hit. If he rolls a hit, I, with yes. Howl being at one health... Oh, it was, wasn't Howl's um, scatter spent from the previous attacks? Oh, and does he still have a scatter? You're thinking of I the think VCX's. the previous maybe the, was it the previous round that he was activated? Uh, I don't think so. I think the VCX has activated okay. this round because they were rolling stuff, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but we'll again two red dice. We'll see what happens. Swarm. I don't. I think that's a double hit again. Oh my god! That's. Oh, apparently it wasn't active. Okay. Right. Uh, but again, a double hit. If you're looking for a rebel screening force, yep. these are the silliest thing you can do, but when they work, uh, uh. 
It's a bit counterproductive though when you're when you're basically activating them two at a time. Oh yeah. Like it, I, I get the the function of them, and uh, you know if if your opponent doesn't have a lot of fighters themselves, well the Z's can even two activations at a time can really overwhelm the opponent's mm -hmm. uh, fighter force. But I think Norm, you know he. He's using Hellrunner as a bait. Like, if he had just thrown a regular TIE Fighter up there, I don't think Nick would have taken the bait. He needed to have, you know, given Nick some something that was, like, a bit of a prize. Yeah. Well, you're tr trading two Zs for Hellrunner. Hellrunner, uh, 15 points? Hellrunner's 17, I think. 16 or 17. Yeah, I, I think she's 16, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, let's say she's... Let's go with the middle, 16 points. Yeah. You're trading two Zs for a Howl Runner. I or potentially trading two Zs for Howl Runner. That's still a win, technically. That's two points for the Rebels. Or two point net two points for the Rebels. Now, did Nick I don't know if Nick had black range on Nick might have just missed an attack. Nick might have just missed an AA attack on Howl Runner. I don't know if that was in range or not, but I'm uh, a little I'm hoping that I'm hoping I'm wrong, and he missed, and he was, how Renner was out of range. But that is that is a one attack getting that scatter spent. Ugh. And those these little mistakes might be starting to add up. But let's just say that it was out of range for the time being, and keep our fingers crossed. Okay, so we have another, um, I believe, a Gazanti activation. Uh, probably the top one. So that's oh. the one in front of the demolisher yes, that's activated. Yes. I believe so. I just need Norm to say something maybe into the mic. Or maybe he's just pre-measuring. A lot of that going on, pre-measuring just to really try and plan out the stuff again. Squadron well, mini game. Well, a squadron game, when you, especially when you have uh, you know a bunch of ships that really care about being distance X from something else. Mm. Uh, you know, it does really pay to take your time to, you know, figure out where you think your opponent's going to be, where you think your main fighter ball is going to be. There's been a lot of times where, you know, especially with guys like Mahler Mythel, I'll send them too far afield, won't be able to activate them. I'll, I'll move them to a position where they can't take use of Hellrunner's extra die, you know, so, so oh, I think it's really important to vector, take care of that. Vector activation. So this is going to be the potentially surprise five movement TIE fighter. Yep. So, yep, Relay activating. I, th I think this might actually be Mahler Mythyl here. Yeah. We'll see what happens when he picks up, if he picks up his squadrons. So this this is not Mahler this Mythyl. This is probably Black Squadron. TIE fighter. I th I think he has a little marker that that could be Black Squadron. I you, I I actually can't tell because it's face just so there's no token. Mahler Mythyl, sorry, the Black Squadron is either this guy or this guy. It's this guy right here. It's the one uh, the, and behind this, the VSD. Yeah, this guy is the one behind the VSD. Thank. Yeah. You. Great eyes. You can just barely see the icons through there. Great eyes. Okay, so just a generic TIE fighter engaging one of those Zs, uh, again as a throwaway, um, outside of jamming fields, so, oh, wait, did I heard a Mahler, did I hear a Mahler, I heard a Mahler. Here comes a splashdown. Mm. Victor, is your favorite squadron Mahler Mythyl? No. Oh. My favorite squadron is Merrick Steel. Good point. You know, Ma Mahler Mythyl, I just get too greedy with him. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I just jump him in the middle of like a of a, a, a reek and ace holes list, <laughs> and then just he, he does his one damage and just and gets then melted. It's melted. Yeah. Okay, so this is Mahler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you make a good point about uh, Merrick. Merrick Merrick has been a standout, and again, especially in this list, and the attack is. I believe a Z just exploded. Yep. So that's another seven points to Norm. And it's 
is starting to rack up. Jamming, float, jamming fields float too long. I'm new. Hmm, I'm not sure. He, he's moving this. He, I don't know if that is what I would consider. If he's, if he's doing squadrons, I would definitely want to activate some of the other ones first right. to keep the jamming fields away. Especially because I don't think he has anything in range. His VCXs are out of... Oh, wait, no, Relay is three. My bad. <laughs> Relay is medium range, so he could get some of those Zs activated. Okay, so I'm going to take that back. Uh, this is probably probably the optimal one, so he can move in his Zs, potentially get outside of the jamming field range, sure. and then cover after the fact. So right. he's going to get the full value out of the Zs. Yeah, you move your Zs where you think the jamming field is going to be, and then you... Uh then you move up your jamming field. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I, I, I remember when the jamming field first came out, there was like a lot of controversy about whether or not you could just turn it off. Oh my God, <laughs> turning it on and off. No, I mean, thematically, sure, it's flipping a switch, yeah. probably, right? Right. We're advanced enough in Star Wars to flip a switch on and off. Game-wise, two points, ugh, that would be ugh, disgusting. Yeah, I don't think it would have been a two-point upgrade at that point. Okay, so we've got a Z. Oh, can it get... Oh, we'll see if it's in range of Howl Runner. Unfortunately, it will be covered by the Janowing Field. I think he's in range of Howl. Do you red dice? What do we got? Is that an accuracy? Oh, accuracy. Yeah. All right. Howl Good Runner night, is Howl. down. So how, how was 17 points? Uh, I believe it's 16. 16. But we can check the internet. Um... So another Z is going to be activating, so it's going to be trying to tie up that other TIE, looks, appears to be tying up that uh, TIE Fighter and Mauler. Um, so now Nick's just checking to see what other uh, Zs he can activate. I think, look, it's just in range, okay. So. But he has his VC axis, so I, maybe he's not properly using, forgetting about Relay. No, I think he remembered. Okay. Yeah, here okay. he goes. Our runner is 16 points. Now, I would like to point out how sad it is because how I typed in HOL and how runner came up as an auto suggestion on my Google keyboard. So I have looked up that card. And you don't even play X Wing, and I know people. A lot of people play How Runner X Wing. So. Oh yeah. All right. So here comes an attack outside. So it's going to be three red dice with potentially. Uh, I believe he's out of jamming field, so he's yep. going to get two rerolls since he's next to Blount. Nice. Oh, oh my god. Boom. It's an accuracy. <laughs> All right, so that was Mauler Mythal taking, uh, taking two damage there. So three damage with an accuracy, accuracy in the scatter. This is... This is the variance of, of like Z95. So you, yep. you never know. You think you, you know, you think, oh, you know, how many double hits can you roll with his red dice? It turns out you can roll quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> and the accuracies too. Like, if you hit red dice as an Armada player, which I know some people out there do, you might regret. You you will be scratching your head, tearing your hair out, watching this. There is one accuracy on a red dice, and he's rolled at least two or three against Scatter Squadrons. And then again, I mean, if you're the kind of person that's like, well, you know, who, who plays Z95s normally? Like, Z95s have been in the game for, I think... A couple uh, months. Yeah, uh, well, more than a couple months. No, 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 months. sorry. They came, out, they came out last year with yeah, uh, the Yeah, almost, almost a full year now. Yeah, uh, okay. Good point. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing Nick putting to really good use here. So Jamie Field uh, Flotilla moves up. Uh, those, yep. So now Norm is just uh, trying to figure out exactly which ships are under Nick's Jamie Field here. Did he even? Re Sorry, just to take a step back. He didn't have to re-roll any of those dice, did he? I don't think so. No, no. it's just natural. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there! Are, I know there are some <laughs> people tearing out their hair at these red dice. This is, ah, uh, man. So what's, Something what's Norm got left? He's got uh, uh, two flotillas. Demo left to activate. And a flotilla. And Did he? Is the Hondo flotilla at the... He's moved Vector, which is the bottom. He's moved his comm net, so I believe he has the Hondo two ships. Left. Hondo and yeah, his demo, demo the, left. The Hondo in front of the demo is what he has left. Now, if 
Uh, Norm can snipe another one of these. Um, snipe another one of these Corvettes, or sorry, uh, these GR75s and reducing the activation. Mm -hmm. Nick starts to lose his advantage of being able to get his pickle, moving his pickle into a, a you know, a spot. Um, I've, again, I'm going to be talking a little off in my own world, but as a second player, I've always struggled to figure to how to go about forcing bad decisions on my opponent. And yeah, well, I, that's all. That's yeah. what Amarna is all about, I think. Yeah. But, but with the first player, you have the initiative. It becomes yeah. a lot easier. So I found you have to make a lot of forks, the bad decisions. You fork a bad decision. Yeah. So Akbar, propping an Akbar in the middle of two of his big targets and like, okay, which one do I activate first? Yep. So Nick might start losing that. Well, Nick will lose that advantage if some of these GR-75s start dying. Okay, so looks like uh, Jamming Field Flotilla oh, is being did you, activated. Did it not go? I... I apologize, everybody. I assumed that had gone already. So this is the Black Squadron moving into position uh, to uh, cover the Saber Squadron. Now, Black Squadron is a TIE fighter with escort. It yep. is a nine-point speed bump, which... Uh, oh, Nothing. that's a miss. Yeah. No are swarm we, on that, though. No swarm. Are we... We're, we're living in a world... We are watching a game where red dice have been more accurate than blue dice. Well, I mean, Norm's getting a lot of criticals. <laughs> Oh, we're sure. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Sure. Okay, so this <laughs> this is going to be four, or sorry, Howl Runner's dead. It's going to be three dice. Yep, three with the swarm this time. Yeah, here we go. It's at the Z, I think. Oh, one? So one hits. <laughs> oh my god, one hit. Accuracy. Was yep. that one hit? He's oh. at one health now. One health, okay. Uh, this is fantastic to watch. Yeah, I mean, some people say squadrons are boring. I, I, I kind of like them. I, I, I mean, when, when you see when you see good players, you know, both Norm and Nick are, they seem to be very good, uh, pushing the squadrons around. It, it becomes enjoyable. It just doesn't yeah. become a like one side just completely eliminates the other squadrons by turn two or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. some people still may f may hate that squadrons, but sure, as, yeah. I, as I again, I, I'm very biased. Squadrons are have always yeah. been part of Star Wars and. I agree. There, it is another game within the game, and it is. Uh, I, there, there's such a sur for me, and I'm not. I can't speak for everybody here. But there's such a cerebral level on top of how you're positioning all your capital ships and how squadrons can affect everything. Right. Is just awesome to watch. Okay, so uh, <coughs> Norm's got a gladiator left. Nav command is going to use it this turn. Uh, that glider is currently at speed one. Uh, I think look, he's probably going to accelerate, yeah. He's going to accelerate, uh, turn away from the MC-80, force the uh, MC-80 to turn around. Now, what, what I want to point out, actually, is that uh, if you look at the arrangement of the flotillas on Nick's side, they've almost cut off the MC-80 yes, from they have. doing a tight turn into the oh, center no. of the board. So, yeah. Uh-oh. So here's the act bar, yeah, he's going to spend it. So now he's speeding up the speed too. Like if he wants to clear that flotilla, you might have to juke a little bit out of the way. No. Oh, uh, with but with the two clicks, he might be uh, able to. But I, I feel like he still can't. You know, it, it, yeah, he's yeah. It, now it's hard to tell how many clicks are in that first joint. But if that flotilla wasn't there, he'd be able to do tight turn. That's what you want to do. If you want to turn into the board, you need to do like a. Yeah. The, the clicks need to be at the bottom of your tool. Yeah, right it hits time, more. It's, yeah. It's a, so uh, just there's, some, there's some times where you want the clicks at the end. Uh, right. For I found it very useful for arc dodging. Yes. If you want your clicks right at the end, but but, but you, if you need these yeah. tight turns now. I mean, your 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 goal right now is as the MC80 is to get back into the fight as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. and that flotilla is getting in the way of that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, demo is not going to be in range of that ship, so Norm is not really in danger of losing it. Uh, so he's not forced to activate it first thing. Mm. And the, uh, the other thing is now Nick, he's got to turn his MC-80 around, and now it's the front arc that's facing Norm's fleet. Not quite the, uh, side, the dangerous side arc that you want. <coughs> so Nick uh, just trying to figure out the, cr the optimal way of uh, turning, the, turning the ship. And 
and uh, he's gonna move and then uh, yep Nix is just gonna make sure that the ship is not remming yeah a lot of clearance there but uh, again wasn't able to do as tight a turn as he hoped and now here's the engine tech movement And he, yeah, he's just going to boost straight. So it uh, doesn't look like it's in range of the demo. Um, demo. Yeah. Demo safe for now. Yeah. Now demo is going to have to start making some hard turns in towards the BSD. But uh, Nick still has... Nick still has a slight activation advantage, being right. going second. So, okay, so one Nick Z ninety five is shooting at uh, Mahler. Yep, only and two dice because of the jamming field. Yep. Uh, it looks like a critical and a regular hit. But he's gonna reroll. Re two hits. That oh, is an accuracy. accuracy. And that is a dead oh Mahler myth. <laughs> I am, I am stunned, ladies and gentlemen. I am stunned. This is the most productive. This is the most accurate red rerolls. I, my Corellian campaign. I right. for the entire Corellian campaign, I had a Warlord, Jonas, and Quad Turbo batteries. I did not roll as many accuracies as being rolled here. Okay, a slight exaggeration, but right. it's pretty close. <laughs> now I think maybe it might even be in Nick's best interest to sort of perhaps um, just leave. Now, the thing is, Nick is technically up 75 yeah. points from the 31 that you see because he is in the lead. Uh, we're not going to track that until the end of the game. Mm -hmm. But just so you're aware, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little less close than it seems. Uh, for obviously, the demo is the objective ship on Norm's side, but uh, he doesn't... He's not anywhere close to uh, one of the, the objective tokens at the moment. So if this game were to end by the end of this turn, or the next turn, for yeah. example, uh, Nick would be the winner here. So it's kind of on Norm to Un mop up. Unfortunately, there is still a ton of squadron points that are tied up, and he is going to have to continue this incredible streak of killing Norm's stuff because he can't just everything just start bailing. Uh, all his ships are still bailing because they're still... Right. There's 93 points in total tied up in squad in tied up in squadrons for Nick. So sure. he's still gonna have to play the squadron game a little a little longer, trying to kill stuff. So Nick making the difficult decisions of which flotilla to activate next. Um, again, just trying to see what he has. I'm not I'm not sure why he's so concerned. Maybe he has relay. Unfortunately, I, I can't see what's going on in his head or what exactly he's thinking, but I believe he's going to be doing some more squadrons. Terrible commentator. Can't see him there for their I, I can't, I, yeah, I cannot see my, I apologize. My producer, Travis, is, I, I'm new at this commentary yeah, relatively. Yeah, we'll someone who can see in their head. Yeah, next okay. Time. Travis is, is going to have to fire me and find that someone can read minds, but uh, we're working on that for maybe, maybe the next couple of rounds. So you're going to have to put up with me until then. So Nick's still... Uh, figuring out exactly what he's going to be doing. Doing some measurements probably with com. Oh, we're moving into another round. Yes, yeah, turn three. Top turn of turn three, three now. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm, they're, they're, he's looking at a lot of dials. He's got a lot of decisions to make. So, uh, I would, again, so far my predictions have been a little wrong, on, especially on Norm, on, in terms of what he's doing with what, with ships. But would I, would I be wrong to suggest there's going to be a lot more squadron commands coming out of those flotilla, uh, GR-75 flotillas? Well, it, the, the danger of that is uh, Norm can just simply activate his VSD, smear a bunch of Z-95s, and now all those squadron commands are wasted. True. Again, jamming fields yeah. is still jamming. Um, so, to answer the question in the chat, the blue on the basis, Norm has attached silicon. He's poured some silicon gel into the bottom of his bases, allowing them to stick much better to, yeah. as he put it. has much more friction on the base of the ship, so that you're not sliding the 
the, when your uh, squadrons around as easily when you're moving other things around it. And he's claimed pretty much everything that he's played Armada on so far. So it's it, it, yeah. you know again. This is similar to someone who put uh, heavy washers in at Worlds just to weigh them down so they don't get bumped around, which is... Yeah, that was a really clever trick. Actually, Paul, one of the one of the players at Swiss, uh, yeah, it's like a, a one and one-eighth inch washers. They're incredibly hard to find. I think you either have to get like a like a specialty supplier or get them custom made or whatever. But yeah, he, w he would put the washers on the... and then put the washers on the table, put the squadron on top of the table. It was a perfect fit. And uh, whenever he needed to move another ship or like over check for overlap, he would just pick up the squadron. The washer would remain on the table, and uh, yeah, the washer would remain on the table. He could like you know check uh, with his maneuver tool, or whatever. When he was done with everything, he would just put the squadron back on top of the washer. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, really clever. Yeah. Just people thinking of ways to make the game a little more, you know, correct and efficient. So that's. We love those ideas. Innovation is innovation both in terms of squadron list or sorry, uh, fleet list and how to yep. you know, go about making the game just a little more accurate and, and, and nicer. Because I don't know about you. I have really large hands. I have big clumsy fingers. I bump squadrons all over the place. Yeah. Especially when I'm running like ten. Well, I don't know about you. I mean, I know you're a bit taller than I am, but like when I've been bent over a table oh my God. Yeah. for like two, three, four hours, my hands start shaking. <laughs> my my back, I mean, these tables here were pretty low. I'm, uh, for the record, I'm around six three, six four. So backing yeah. over, my hands are shaking, my back's a little sore. So I'm glad I'm sitting here commentating. I would love to be playing, but right on my back and my, you know, mental state is probably I'm okay right here. So, but again, I don't quite. I didn't have what it takes last year to win, so I'm okay with this. But yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry. I believe Norm's still deciding what he wants to activate first. There's again a lot of choices. I, I would probably do the VSD first, just yeah. to get the another nice big. I think the VSD makes the most sense here. Yeah, and it, he does indeed activate the VSD. And uh, big surprise, it is a squadron command, no token this time, so it's going to be four activations. Uh, losing out on Howl is one less die, so uh, we'll, s we'll see what these blue dice haven't been paying off very well. Uh, to be fair, last round, like, it, 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 it was it was Howl Runner and the and flight Mahler. controllers, but... Yeah. Oh, Howl, sorry, Howl sorry. Flight controllers, but it was, um, <laughs> yeah, loud table noises in our ears, but uh, it was uh, mitigated by the jammy field, so now... I, don't think the the, the closest uh, VCX and the Z are I, protected by the Jamie field. It's it's hard to tell from the yeah. single, but I, th I believe they are, I believe they still are. Right. But, uh, okay. We'll we'll see when the dice get laid down. Z ninety five, four dice, um, and apparently it popped. Crunch. And he is drawing his squadrons back. So this, what, what I believe he's now, he's trying to pull them away, and he's going to start trying to point them in the direction of that pickle if he believes he still has enough stuff in the area to start winning the squadron more. For sure. Because once those those blue dice, which are now a Sloan, one, very good at hitting with the reroll, and two, yep. potentially stripping the base, or stripping uh, tokens with Sloan's ability, they're going to start being a problem. Now again, yep. if... if he starts whiffing, and they get A down. You know, it's a bit of a loss. Right. But so here's a, a saber squadron snipe on the VCX. Four dice. Swarm. Yep. Where is he? Getting? No, because he, he's engaged with this oh, uh, that, tie fighter. Got yeah. it. So that's a dead VCX. And that is that is a huge loss. That yeah. is a terror. I, well, all your squadron commands are basically been nerfed by one. Uh, I mean, one. most of his Z's are in range of most of his flotillas. Yep. So. Now the question is, do you send Rhymer and if you if that that do you send Rhymer down there to murder that Gazan or that other uh, flotilla? You, you bring it, them. It accelerated out of to speed three. You may not have enough time yeah. uh, to catch it while it's running away. Plus, the the previous turn, the the flotilla died because it was a combination of a full squadron activation's worth of Rhymer bombardment plus the VSD firing. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Okay, so. Um, 
there's also the option of dropping Merrick in there because Merrick crunches generics. Black dice are really good, and one of your black dice is always going to have a hit with Merrick's ability. So, <laughs> I, I I usually use Merrick Steel as like the mop up. You you wanna you wanna take out uh, like a significant chunk of their squadron force so they yeah. don't easily counterattack in one activation and kill your twenty point finisher. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and again, as I've mentioned, my Merrick's allergic to Z's, so this could this could be dangerous. So so far, um, Norm has activated two of the four squadrons mm. that uh, he's able to this turn with this VSD activation. Mm. Um, he has relay cover. Well, he has range and relay coverage to most of his squadron. There is a stranded Tie Fighter up top that he can't quite get at unless he moves Jen, in, right. which he can. Uh, I, I again, relay is being incredible, incredible tool. And at, at first, you know, like uh, unlike the rebels, where you definitely want a lot of relay ships. Uh, you know, not only because of the the fact that it has relay and strategic, but like eight hull, three blue dice is is a really good deal for mm. fifteen points. Yeah. Uh, same normally can't be said true for lambda shuttles because I really almost never see them in in multiples. No, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, like the only the only consistent relay ship I see on the Imperial side is simply Jendon. Yeah. And I think it is the most cost effective. Like. Uh, you know, uh, one of the breakout upgrade cards I think of the last uh, 12 to 18 months is a card that was in Wave One, Adar Talon. Oh, Adar yes. Talon, yeah. I don't think was in previous iterations of the um, Reekin Ace Hole list, but I, you know, Norm, uh, Norm is winning, activated. yeah, Norm winning uh, Worlds 2017 had Adar Talon, and I think that Jendon is like the Imperial Adar Talon. Yeah. As close as they can get. So, sorry, yep. another TIE Fighter active. Okay. Yep. Looks like two damage. On the Z Yep. Um, yeah. It, again, so one of the one of the big things about the breakout upgrades is, and and this is Jendon. Sorry, a Jendon activation. He's gonna yep. move someone. Adar Talon essentially allows Rebel players to go over the 134 points by giving benefits outside of there, where Jendon has to be incorporated into your squadron points, and that's 20 points up. Uh, we're going to get a snipe. Yep. So here's a snipe against uh, that Z95. Down. Down. So um, one of the big things the Rebels' uh, Gallant Haven list really excels at is taking their squadrons and giving them more value outside of that 134 points. Imperials don't quite have as many tools that are just, you know, unique to them. Yeah. So wherever they so wherever they can get them is you know, with the flight controllers is pretty much the biggest one. Uh, the other ones are rather over I, I feel they're a little overcosted and they have to rely on inter squad synergy to really get, you know, the big potential damage as we've seen with uh, how a runner swarm Jendon. So that's where one thing I found between uh, with relay from the VCXs, just being able to transfer all of this out of out of squadron points upgrades right. into your squadrons, just making them even more deadly and and, and scarier. But again, the Imperial synergy is very very strong within squadrons. So uh, we got a comms note. There is about uh, three Z's, or sorry, one, two, three, four, five Z's left, uh, if I can count. That's yeah, I count six total squadrons on Nick's side, okay. so it's one VCX, five Z's. And one of those Z's being Blount. Is Blount, yeah. Now, unfortunately, with one of those VCX going down, this uh, comms that squadron, I don't believe we'll be able to get all the activations out of. Uh, the full value, <coughs> but again, we'll see these these D variances and these red the red die, the bane of some of my players, the bane of my life sometimes. Now, now he's keeping he was keeping his uh, he's been doing good discipline, keeping his Zeds close to his flotillas. But I don't even think any of his flotillas have uh, done any anti squadron attacks. I, I think he's missed out. I, I don't know if he's. You missed think out. he forgot, or you think he's just I, out of range? It's hard to tell. I'm swarm. Oh, 
He's gone for big. Oh my. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, um, Z's just doing Z stuff. I, anyway, so I'm gonna give. I I would highly give them the benefit of the doubt that they were out of range. I, it's hard to tell from this camera angle, and I'm I'm not staring over. But I didn't right. see any measuring. I didn't see uh, any. You know, I didn't hear any talking through the table mic that we have right. access to. So, I don't know. He might have missed out. Um, I am his ride home, so I will definitely have be having a chat with him on the way home. But so far, these Z's have been performing above expectations. So, um, so a comms net token getting passed over yep. to the VSD, getting another big essentially a big hammer strike of flight controller TIE fighters coming into what remains of the Z, uh, the Zs, which again, still is a lot and right. have been doing work. Hey, so like uh, we got like about three or four people watching this finals table. Uh, th th there is also an Imperial Assault uh, finals going on right in front of us. Uh, crowd's a little bit bigger, I think, because... <laughs> uh, I think uh, for me at least, when you after you play three rounds of Armada, you just like get really tired. Yeah. You, you, well, this thing is being live stream. You know, you could just go home. By the time you get home, even if it took you an hour to get home, you're still going to be <laughs> in turn two of this game yeah. when you get here. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're a little past the halfway point uh, of this uh, of this mm -hmm. game. Uh, we are still in turn three. So these turns haven't taken long. And just remember that there are a lot of squadrons and a lot of uh, flotillas. So it's kind of dragging. Yep. No, I know your feelings. I know your no. feelings about flotillas. I, my, I, um, this is a PG, uh, 15, PG, PG stream. So I cannot discuss my flotillas, but uh, they, they, they have been. They're an interesting addition to the game, and I am happy they're in there. But I. Yep. I have a lot of personal changes I'd like to see done to them, but that I am not a game designer, and FFG should probably not listen to me. So, uh, but again, the, this, the boom to the squadron game from Flotillas have been very, you yep. know, I think personally healthy. That's one thing I really like the Flotillas. It's allowed for the f squadrons to really flourish, and right. again, I'm a big squadron fan, so I'm okay with that. So I think we're also, uh, we have uh, Drasnida mentioning that, you know, if uh, Norm keeps up with the squadron traits, uh, he can uh, cut through those flotillas. I think we're, we're starting to hit the tipping point of the uh, efficacy of uh, Nick's squadrons because, mm. you know, Z95s, like uh, most other swarms, have strength in numbers. Uh, you start cutting away at a lot of them, then eventually you don't have enough ships left to do any significant damage Correct. to the opponent's squadrons. Yeah. And uh, the quality of Norm's individual squadrons is still superior to, to Nick's. Yes. Now, that being said, I mean, we, we see how good Nick is at rolling double hits on red dice. Yes. So. And, and we've seen Norm not roll a lot of criticals, but not a lot of accuracy. So the, there's not good optimal ways. Those The victories and demo only have red dice that can produce accuracy. Right. So they might have a lot of trouble stripping those scatter tokens. And I that was my bane last year. I made the mistake of like, my demo is gonna kill a bunch of flotillas and then I'm like, oh wait, scatter. Right. And then last nationals was, flotillas really hadn't gotten into the meta as much as possible. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really thinking about that as much. Um, but now people have thought about it a little more and, and, and you can you understand that Flotilla's locking right. down that scatter is really difficult. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting Sloan. I'm always forgetting Sloan. Sloan might help that out. Yeah. But. So uh, Nick just uh, activated that one of those Flotillas, uh, ran, the one that's close to the MC-80, rammed into the MC-80, took a damage card on it. Uh, yeah, I think I think Nick's just learning a little bit from previous turn. You don't want to you don't want to move that flotilla, get in front of the MC-80 no. again, cut it off from making a sharp turn into the center of the board. Mm -hmm. So, jamming his auntie from uh, Norm. I believe it will be another squadron activation, but we shall see. Up uh, squadron, not a not a surprise. And again, with this beautiful relay coming in, he's going to start moving. I believe. 
He's gonna start tearing through there. I think that is Merrick. Or that it's sorry, that is Rhymer first. Rhymer always first, getting that range. And then uh, possibly, f and by possibly, I mean probably following it up with Merrick. So one black. One hit. Nick making That's decisions. on the flotilla, right? On the flotilla, yeah. side of the flotilla, yep. He's making a big decision here. Does he take the hit? Or, oh, Travis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, does he does he have his scatter and get it stripped by Merrick? And he, uh, making a decision because do you want your scatter stripped potentially stripped by Merrick? And Merrick's nope. been on point on stripping those or spending them off. <sighs> hey Nick, just checking to see which uh, of the remaining squadrons are unactivated. And we got a SoCal shout out there. <laughs> yes, he, Nick has been on fire today he's had some yeah. very good games uh, he, he's got some support here too uh, crazy mac uh, mckenzie also the, kind of representing socal i guess well yeah i guess i mean mac is the z pioneer here so we we mac mac spiritual spiritual guide for nick here one would say yeah so this this is the second such uh canada versus usa grudge match that we've uh featured tonight uh, we had the X-Wing uh, finals a couple of hours ago. Uh, that was a uh, U.S. person and a Canadian person. The Canadian ended up winning, Merrick as it should be. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. And I takes one. And uh, yeah, just to just to remind everybody, the power of Sloan's ability is that uh, once you spend an accuracy to to spend a defense token, that defense token cannot be used during this attack step. It's like a super accuracy. Um, yeah, so, you know, spending the scatter, making sure you still get that damage. Um, and it, it makes, it makes especially people who play a lot of flotillas, like, you know, that's the hidden power of Sloan. Uh, you start making your opponent very play, like, use his defense tokens very conservatively. Yes. Yes. Where, whereas they would just be like scatter, don't care, scatter, don't care. Um, yeah, Sloan, Sloan makes you make a lot of difficult choices. Now. And and Merrick really, Merrick and Jin really put the herd on flotillas yeah. because within two activations, you if if you get um, you could potentially have to do like one well, a, you're guaranteed a crit with Merrick. So you know, in a lucky world, you could put the uh, flotilla down to one health with a structural now a, or not, but you know. The fact that there's two activations killing a ship. Right. Yeah, that's pretty good. And maybe, again, I'm a little projecting here, but the struggles of killing flotillas has been very difficult, and getting rid of that scatter, oh my. Now, that VSD is already activated, so, however, in the following turns, he could be killing that flotilla since the scatter's gone. So Norm is uh, no. Actually, just to correct you, the scatter's still there. Oh, the scatter's still there. <coughs> yeah, wow. it's uh, this ship right here. Uh, I am getting a little tired. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> right, he's taken two. So he's taken two damage. Yep. So that flotilla's one away from dying, and if that goes, Norm is or sorry, Nick is gonna start losing his activation advantage. However, yeah, he just needs to lose one more ship, and then. Uh, Norm has the activation advantage here. Mm -hmm. However, that pickle is getting close, and I've had the gladiator is still a five hull ship, and if they, if there's one good attack, the gladiator's done. So I mean, Norm has the ability. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Norm, I believe, has the ability to. I can't remember if the demo's already moved this turn, but he does have the ability to. Demo is not moved. Move last, move first. Well, if the demo hasn't moved, it does seem odd. As long as Nick still has activation advantage, mm. or yeah, he does. He has five activations versus Norm's five activations. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, this might this might be a big mistake. Um, however, that arc is big. 
Yeah. I think I think maybe Nick's thinking, well, you know, if I move close enough, there's really no way, even if he activates first next round, to escape my my side arc. The side arc might become obstructed beneath the station, but yep. yeah, it's still a lot of red dice, so oh, we'll see. Um, XI sevens come into play as well. There is a redirect on there. Yep. And leading see, shots. Leading shots. Defiance. Uh, defiance. Yeah, defiance would have. Now, do you think that Norm could actually turn his demo tight enough to get into the front arc of that? No. No? I, I, I don't. I, at he's moving, I believe he's moving speed two at the moment. Yeah. So he'd have to... He'd have to... Uh, he'd have to do two navs and make sure he gets there but yeah. I think he's still I don't think he can physically fit in there and then he's going to ex possibly expose himself to a double arc Victor Gonzalez uh, the first player is Norm uh, so he chose Intel Sweep uh, amongst Nick Brown's objectives uh, currently Nick is actually up two objective tokens to one so while the, the, the current score reads uh, 56 to 39 in favor of Norm uh, if the game were to end right now, Nick would in fact win because you'd add 75 points to the final score. However, we are on turn three. We're, we're going into turn. No, we're going into turn three. Aren't we? No. Uh, I, I got to look at the uh, activation stuff. So that was just the uh, just the Imperial Salt guys. Uh, Finishing up their their tournament. Yeah, I believe we're going into turn turn four, turn three, going into turn right, four. Right, as turn three, red. And that red does make sense because that otherwise that victory star destroyer was moving awfully fast for two turns. It is speed two. That's no, true. I, I, anyway, but yeah, sir, it's getting a little late. Everybody, I apologize about uh, at least Victor's doing a fine job. I apologize about my mistakes. So now um, <laughs> this is Norm. He's trying to figure if he can get behind that ship. Uh, with the <coughs> this, yeah, with the uh, demo demo triple tap here. Uh, that is still really difficult. It's I it's so risky. Yeah. I don't know. I honestly don't know if he can do it because you're fitting a small. I mean, a small base can potentially fit in the back, but it is. Now, if there's the, anybody that yes. can do it, it's Norm. Yep. Uh, he's uh, he's he's made maneuvers I just had never would have dreamed. Now what he is doing, like I can see exactly, he needs to pick up that objective token because it is he is it is the objective ship. So he's thinking, I'll jump in, I'll shoot you. Next activation, next turn, I'll activate demo first, pick up the objective token, uh, oh. turn behind the MC30 and grab the other one. Grab the other one and get it because the. Um, uh, As it is, so he's going to try blocking the lead, I'm just guessing here, yep. he's going to try blocking the lead flotilla so that his obje Nick's objective flotilla bumps the lead flotilla, doesn't get close enough to that objective token, and then Norm picks up the second oh, objective token. Nope. So, I, well, okay, and then Norm <laughs> decides to completely uh, <laughs> ruin <coughs> oh, wait, my, well, my okay. master of pull He hasn't moved yet, and we can <coughs> yell, at, let's make sure not to yell loud enough to do that yet. We're just raising our voices because the, the volume level of the room has changed just a little bit. Yeah. So when, when a bunch of these people leave, we're just gonna I think we're just gonna go back down to our uh, our Gulf Channel voice. Yeah. And and again, this is the difficult thing with the pickle. That arc is so huge. So he's gonna maybe with the two speed three activations, he can get out of range. And if he gets out of range, Th this right here is the pivotal. Uh, activation of the game. Oh, speed three. <laughs> At least there's no... Well, uh, yeah, you're right. Actually, uh, Norm had to fl play against two Recon lists to make it to this top cut. He beat two Gallant Haven lists. Two Gallant Haven Recon lists. Piloted against, uh, you know, I'd say one of... The, would you consider him the best Gallant Haven player since he Yick, won Worlds? Yick, by far, the okay. person he, he played in the last round to get to this point. Uh, I think he's by far one of the best squadron players in Toronto, and yeah. he's been playing Gallant 
haven or gallon hell, as we like to call it, for a very long time. I think they coined a new new phrase, the RCAF, the Royal Canadian Air Force. I believe it is the more. No, no, it's the Royal Canadian Assault Frigate. Assault Frigate. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Because that's what the gallon haven is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, there is no ranking, and but he's had. Uh, Norm has had to slog through two of those gallon haven lists. So, again, whatever your feelings about that, congrats to him for going through there. Because yep. I, I, again, if I had, the, I have a very similar fleet, and we talked about how we would beat it. I never, I was very fortunate not to play one. So, I got lucky, but he had to go through two to get here, and did throw in a very spectacular fashion. But unfortunately, those games weren't streamed, and. You know, it would be nice to go over and, and just, I would be fawning over the squadron play, absolutely, but uh, un unfortunately I didn't get to watch all those games, so we'll just, we still have a treat here. Okay, so Nick is activating his objective ship. Uh, it was a squadron command, so now he's just trying to figure out which uh, squadrons he's going to activate. So uh, I think now he's going to try to run away with his squadrons just to preserve those points. I think he realizes that, okay, Nick, you know, Norm turned away, turned away from my MC-80. Uh, if I can preserve as many points as possible, like, you know, just survive to turn six to the end of the game, uh, I will, he'll have the intel suite now. Yeah. However, there is two five-speed squadrons on Norm's side. That's true. And one of those has snipe, so... Well, I mean, he has vectors, so he actually has four speed. Oh yeah, that's right. Points. I forgot the time. <laughs> yeah, and I, unfortunately, I believe his one of his another one of his GR seventy fives potentially could be going down. Just bringing that lead even, that Intel sweep lead a little closer. So we're uh, getting some more little um, maneuvering decisions here. And then when you fly, in, if you fly in these f close formations, yep, the potential for just bumping into each other and ruining your plans is uh, potentially really high. So it looks like an acceleration of speed three here with the GR seventy five objective ship to try to get to distance one of that uh, objective token. Uh, if he does pick that up, that will make three Intel sweep tokens for Nick, uh, which is, I believe. Uh, is that enough to cement the lead? I think it's five. Secure seventy-five points. Seventy-five. Did he? He's picked up three objectives. Uh, he's so picked right? up. This would be his third. This yeah. will be his. Yeah. Third. So demo hasn't picked up any. And yeah, demo picking up the one probably is a suicide at this point. So. Norm activating some more squadrons. And. <laughs> Uh, moving in to potentially sh kill or strip the sc scatter is still available on that flotilla. Yeah. Flotilla number two. Yep. But he could potentially strip it off. So it was a sl um, slow and reroll, and I think that was one damage there. So actually, that was actually a um, an accuracy um, burning the scatter. So the scatter is on its red side now. Still has two hull, the jamming field. Didn't Merrick or Tony flip one? No, I think I think he had flipped it, but he wasn't able to seal the deal and oh, okay. make him discard the last turn. Uh, <laughs> Audio Weasel, you you haven't really missed much. There's uh, yeah. There's more than two real ships. There's three. That VSD is uh, it's got quad battery turrets. It's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite intimidating. Oh, but uh, that MC80 actually hasn't fired a single shot all game, and we're in turn four now. All right. So a couple more now. Yeah. 
Nick is getting into a little bit of a tough position. He's getting kind of boxed in with his flotillas. Um, I don't. That I believe. I, I am fairly confident that that flotilla will be going down to Mer Merrick and some uh, other squadron. The, tr the trouble is, though, I think uh, you know Nick, Nick. Even if he loses that flotilla, he's still going to win. If he if he runs away with all his ships. It could be. Yeah, I, and I think I think Nick realizes that, which is why he's running. The, so I guess the question is going to come down to: Can Norm Squadrons clean up the opposing Zs? Because there's 93 points in total of squadrons yep. of Zs. And <clears throat> excuse me. And will he ca catch another flotilla or two? Maybe. Uh, one token for each intel. Uh, Nick currently has two of the tokens. Actually, no, there is. He, he's right. He hasn't picked up the third, the third token yet. Right. Yes. Uh, next turn, when he activates that flotilla, he yeah. will. Yeah. Nick currently yeah. has two, and he's pretty much guaranteed a three. Yeah. I uh, don't think that uh, Norm was really caring about those anymore because yep. until sleep, you just need to get more than your opponent. Okay, so they are starting up their next round, um, setting their buckets, if you will. <laughs> I like that term, buckets. That's a like that's a Mackenzie that's a Mackenzieism when they say buckets. Hour five. Hour five. Hour five. They're just getting a time conf confirmation at the table, guys, because they do not have access to the number of oh, points yeah. being scored uh, and. I mean, I assume they could count the points, but it would be... I, th I think, uh, I mean, if Nick's paying attention, he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's, got this, uh, he's got this game if he just plays Kiki. Uh, I, I have to... Hmm. Well, so, okay. I've got to do a quick little math in my head. I, I am very concerned that um, the squadron points will be, er, sorry, Norm might be able to tie down those Zs and finish them all off. He might lose some more of his squadrons. Here, here's the risk with that. Nick's running away. Um, that means Norm has to chase with all his squadrons. Yes. He might get out, now he does have relay, but he might get out of uh, activation range to be able to activate more than two squads at a time. That's, so. but, but he has he has all his flotillas yeah. available. Oh wait, is there a flotilla in range of the MC-80? Because uh, where, where did that? Yes, I think he was ranging out the uh, the the flotilla. I, I don't know if that was like this one, the Comsat, I think it was. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, did he dodge it? I think he's out of range there. I believe he is out of range of that uh, MC-80, this measure. Yep. And... And... Oh. <laughs> now it's Norm's turn, <laughs> yeah. Now it's Norm's turn to... Uh... To roll the double hit, I think that kills. Did he him. get the double hit? Yeah, he got oh, the yeah, double because he concentrated fire. It was it was a hit crit. Uh, Nick uses the evade to re-roll the crit. And, uh, oh my god! Oh my gosh! Is that a bare GSD or is it full demolished? It's halfway in between. I well, it's got doesn't have engine text. That's like yeah. really the main difference. But yeah, it's and, got and, you know, demolisher, Sloan, yep, assault parts on torpedoes. And ordnance experts. It's missing out on the intel officer. The, the good old Clonisher days. If, if the veterans remember the good old Clonish intel officer. Wasn't it Admiral Montferrat that was the Clonisher? No. no? I, well, oh, okay. I mean, it wasn't on mine. I wanted to strip those braces and punch them in the face. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, it, well, it, it's, let's say it's a two-thirds. Two-thirds? Two-thirds demo? And it's like the, the luxury, luxury yacht. Yep. Yeah, it's the upgrade from the flotillas, all the... All the commanders usually ended up themselves up mm. in. And this wasn't actually an interesting decision. Uh, and, and Victor, again, the, the pioneer of this list, brought this up. He felt that, uh, or you felt, sorry, that Sloan was better on the demo as it survived more often than the victory. Yep. Sorry, it, it got quiet again in this room, so we're going to have to... 
We're gonna have we're gonna have to get our golf voices now. We got some music um, going on at the the table, so. Uh, yeah, and so he's doing some squadron commands and yep. pulling away. Uh, so he's just trying to run. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's twenty. Uh, yeah, it's twenty. Yeah, it's twenty points. 20 points. Okay, 20 so we're just updating the scores right here about the GR seventy five that died. Now, um, with the Intel token. Oh, sorry, the Intel sweep. Nick is um, currently, currently, quote, sitting under 114 points. Yep. And again, because this is the final table, uh, as long as you win by one MOV, uh, it's fine. Audi Wheels will know that the players can't hear us. We're, we're not that close to them. Plus, there's, like, some music uh, being played at the table, so they're unable to make out what we're saying. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, the, the players are, are courteous enough to let us know if... If they can actually hear us. Mm -hmm. Let's see, here's the problem. Here comes a five speed TIE fighter tying things up. Now, given the nature of the Z95 rolls, it might just explode for its pay for yep. its sins. But but any then again, you're trading a seven point squadron for an eight point squadron and points every point matters. So Yeah, it's true. This is a this is a top well potentially a kills the Z95, but do you take that risk? You are behind. Uh, maybe... Uh, maybe. I mean, the... Maybe what you do is you try to take out the, uh, the Zs that are closest to the flotillas and therefore neuter the uh, flotilla's ability to squadron back because then they have to rely on relay. They only have one relay. Mm -hmm. But then you're bringing them into the AA range. Into the AA range of flotillas and and, and, and the leading shot back bar. I think that's the bigger that's the bigger problem here. Norm is in a tough position. Now, now to be honest, I know what I would have done and just run in and um, try and kill the pickle because I'm yep. stupid. But it worked for me. <laughs> I, I, I did practice against a version of Nick's list oh, yeah. uh, just really recently. And okay. I did manage to kill the pickle. The squadron composition was very different and... I would have cried because Z's, he didn't have any Z's in that list, so I don't. So you, you wait. Uh, you were you were playing against Nick, like play testing against. Play him? testing against Nick. Okay, and, and he, he this is a this is an iteration where he added the Z's to the list. This was a last night decision because ah. this was last night we were play testing these things, and I killed the pickle doing a different objective and stuff. But he had some X wings and they they popped. Yeah. But the Z's, I have a fear of Z's. I, I, <laughs> I have an unmitigated fear of Z's. So. Yep. Uh, Audio Weasel, as we were mentioning earlier, it, it's true, the MC-80 hasn't taken a single shot, uh, but what you're, what you're looking at the score is 76-39. However, uh, when Nick picks up that, uh, that objective token that's under his GR-75, and this objective being Intel Sweep, he is just basically add another 75 points onto Nick's score. So right now, uh, Nick is sitting at a virtual 114. When he does pick up that third token, I think it's safe to assume that we can just uh, add those 75 yeah. points onto Nick's score. So um, it's actually Norm that has to do a bunch of work, I think, to be able to win this game. But um, as we've discussed, he's got a bunch of five-speed squadrons and snipe. I think... I feel, feel he can pick off those Z's. Mm -hmm. But I mean, now it's the, the pressure's on Norm to do something. Yes, like he's exactly. the one that has to be proactive here. Yes, Z's are only as strong as your red dice rolling. Yeah. But uh, if you did join on Slate, you've missed out on three accuracies from Z's, as well as double hits. A bunch of double hits. Double, double hits double everywhere, hits, actually. Double, like, and they were rolling, like, some of them were rolling two dice because of jamming fields. So, yep. yes, Z's are only strong as a red rolling, but Nick is uh, one with the red dice tonight. It's been impressive. Anyway, so... Norm is, uh, I don't believe he's actively activated his ship. He's still just trying to figure out which yep. ship to activate. And again, assuming there's squadron commands coming with it. Uh, yes, yes, audio, we've mentioned. <laughs> 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 it doesn't improve them, trust me, yep. 
So here's an activation uh, by Norm, the VST, uh, Squadron Command. They're going to spend it this turn. He has four activations due to his expanded hangar base. And did he get a token? I think and that he comes yeah. through a token over. I think so, yeah. So I think he is spending the token? Uh, ha hasn't heard yet. Yeah. He spends the token. So he's going to spend. I just spend the token, yep. So there's going to be five activations. And here comes the TIE Fighter and Merrick Steel Pain Train. <laughs> Yeah, just here you go. One one big last ditch effort to smear as many units at ninety fives before. I believe he's just engaged he's with range. Blount if he's in range. I think so. Okay, he's saying he's fudge a little bit, but yeah, he's saying it's fine. So here comes four dice. Looks like one, two, two hits. Yep, so that yep. was Blount. So okay. he's... Oh, Norm has finally hit the accuracy gods now. He has okay. done two so damage. That was, no, that was a brace. Uh, he used his brace because he slowed the scatter. So it went from two damage to one damage. Did, but Blount just died because of Mahler. Did he? Nope, he no, Mahler has okay. been dead. <laughs> no, but Mahler moved in and did damage to Blount, I believe. Yeah, so it's now at one, one HP. Okay, yep. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Blount is this dude right here. And by this dude, we mean the... Uh, so the one that was attacked by... Yeah. yeah. And now is probably going to be attacked by the second. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's going to be sniped, actually. So so he's increasing his... Uh, basically, he's increasing the amount of dice he's rolling here. To five? Yep. And did he get an accuracy? And yeah, yes, that is a accuracy. dead one. Blount is 14 points, right? Blount is... Blount is 14 points. And those squadrons are just outside of that AA range. <coughs> All right. I'm going to assume they're outside of medium range, but... So that was uh, two of five activations. Now, I guess Norm is deciding... I mean, I don't think it makes any sense to go after the MC-80 here. No, no, yeah. no. You just... You just pick off your squadrons. <coughs> Or not. <laughs> that does not look like you're going after squadrons with Merrick well, Steel. Well, one of the things he's he might be doing is that he knows he's going to be turning his uh, VSD in. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's probably setting them up so that they're close enough to the VSD next turn to be activated again. That's fair. Yeah. But I don't know if I would just throw uh, Merrick in there just to tie those guys up. Right. I would consider, like, if he can, I would just throw them in there, tie them up. And yes, I know he's allergic, but... Yep. Yeah, I mean, Merrick is, is the equivalent of three Zs, and yep. Merrick, again, choo uh, choose through generics. So here's uh, Nick activating the Akbar MC-80 with a navigate command, and I believe he's going to use it. Now he's checking to see if the uh, if the demo is in long range. And now uh, he's, checking, he's checking AA range. So here's the. Oh. Everything is out. Wow. Jeez, wow. I thought I thought for sure the demo would have been in range there. Crazy. Now here's the question. Yeah. Um, huh, if that MC80 start picks off that flotilla in the rear, that's another twenty five points. Twenty. Sorry. Uh, that right. flotilla is probably well. If it's it's either the jam or the comms. It's actually, jam. Yeah. It's 25 points. Yeah. So that could be another 25 points that could help swing this game in Nick's favor. Right. Uh, but he, d he does need to position himself so that he's actually getting the side arc, though. Uh, I, uh, think he's and I, I think he got it there. I think he got it. Yeah. But is d the question is, is Demo in range? Because if no, Demo... I, just, I don't even think you go after Demo at this no, point. No, but my point is if, um, if, if Demo is not in range, no one can just activate that flotilla and fly it away. As from yes. initiative, so he needs to have two targets in there to yep. really threaten. One, well, he needs to have two targets to threaten. Faux show. Sure. So if, um, and both both are in range, and that is a rear shot into a demo. Uh, he can only he can only have two shields with XI sevens, and. Yep. So Norm is just confirming that that ship that's in front of the MC eighty is indeed a Comsnet. 
So here's a navigate command from the oh, comsec guy. He's com opting to activated. yep. So opting to keep the uh, keep the command, use it. Uh, good idea because you're going to accelerate and get out of that range of the side arc. Okay. I MCA. for some reason I had thought the comms net had already gone. So there uh, go. Ooh, ooh, just out. I think it's just, just out. out. So Nick is going to go ahead and activate his objective ship, but, yep, and he does indeed remember to pick it up. So now, with that third Intel sweep objective token picked up, we're going to go ahead and add 75 points to Nick's score. Mm -hmm. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so okay. uh, uh, Nick is, uh, as we said, he's, he's in the lead. Because uh, he does have that those extra seventy five points from mm -hmm. the objective, so it, so Norm needs to uh, kill twenty four points worth of squads and or flotillas, uh, which is on the table with the, between the VCXs. Yep. The yeah. three Zs give him twenty one, and the, and that's another fifteen, so thirty six. He he doesn't have much time left to do it though. We're going into turn five soon, so that's two more activations worth of squads. Nick may just continue to run away. That is true. Yeah. Jendon is out of range of... Well, he will be in range. Jendon hasn't moved. I, no, and neither has Merrick Steel. So, uh, you know, Merrick Steel... Merrick Jendin, Steel has moved. Merrick Steel oh, moved across. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, yes. But, but Jendon being able to get in there and giving those things, those yeah. uh, TIE Fighters. Uh, but yeah, see, Nick Nick is doing what I think he, he should be doing. Just trying to preserve those points. This is a very tough... All right. So, is the is the MC eighty entirely out of the picture? I think so. Okay. Even with engine techs, uh, what turn are we on? We're on turn four. Turn so, on four. But the ship has already moved. So turn five, uh, it's going to get into range, but then demo VSD and uh, the Everything other ship else. is going to move out. Yeah. Right. And he can never catch. Yeah. And then turn six, like he's already out of range, so it doesn't make any sense. So I don't think the the MC eighty is doing anything other than area control at this point. So it really falls on Norm to be able to, uh, you know, catch those those fleeing fighters and um, and kill them. I mean, he, he does have Saber Squadron. He could do it. Absolutely. I, I, Saber Saber yeah. Squadron is going to be. I think I think Saber Squadron is probably going to be the saving grace of of Norm no, Celeste, yeah. assuming assuming he does it here. Yeah. Saber is Saber today for me. Um, disappointed me one game. He was very, very accurate, but didn't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. And but then he turned into a <laughs> okay. Saber turned into yeah. a great MVP, um, picking off mm -hmm. some key Intel squadrons, picking off uh, a Shara Bay. Yep. And because no one wants to shoot at a Shara yeah. Bay. So. so. Norm still has the flotilla on the side of the board. Um, at this point, I forgot yeah, if that's the Honda. Vector. It's oh, vector. Vector Hondo. Yeah, Vector Hondo. Everything started back here, Mike. Okay. Uh, man, this uh, this is actually turning into like a bit of a nail biter here. <laughs> So this is uh, shooting at a this is shooting at a Zing ninety five that's oh. either obstructed or under. Uh, it's on the, it's field. on the rock. Yeah, it's on the rock. I forgot there was another Z there. Yeah. That is whoops. <laughs> that I didn't see the Z. Yeah. That's so here's another shot. One damage. Is that enough? No, that, I think one HP is still left on that uh, Z ninety five. Now in order to win, I think Norm uh, has to kill. Uh, one VCX and two Zs worth of points to get this. It's 14 plus 15, yep. that's 29. Yep, math checks out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or three Zs. Uh, four Zs. Four Zs? 21, yeah, 21 wouldn't be enough. No, you need, tw like, four Zs is 28 points. And, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So three Zs wouldn't be enough. Yeah. I think, yeah, well, he does have four Zs, so if he does kill them all, but I don't think he's going to be able to, unless he, uh, he plays super smart with the Saber Squadron and kills, like, the furthest most, 
but then you just have to be worried about uh, getting jumped by the remaining surviving yeah, squads. Like, yeah. So it's a bit of a knife edge that Norm has to ride here. Yeah, I, 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 we, I see the Z's running away, but yeah. I always, those red dice have been on point the whole game. So, right. so here we go, top of turn five. 47 minutes left in this uh, final match of the Canadian Nationals 2017. Jenden is... Uh, no, never mind. Uh, Audio Weevil, Weasel, I think they're designed to go poof, but it's a question of, uh, like, you know, at, at, I think a lot of lists with Zeds in them, and I think Nick has done a good job with this, is that they, they'll they die. You just have to accept that they die. But uh, it's all about, like, trading up. Trading up, yeah. Right? Trading up either in terms of, like, I've delayed you for X turns, uh, which allows my, you know, giant ships to eliminate your biggest threat or I'm able to trade up my seven points worth of Zed for your even your eight point worth of TIE Fighter or your 11 point worth of Interceptor etc mm -hmm. and, and again with jamming fields as we've mentioned already keeping them alive just that li potentially that's just a little bit longer to yep somehow throw six dice in your face or, or sorry uh, six four to six damage in your face this is Norm again oh no I think that was a bit of a nudge there So this is a long-range, it looks like it's a long-range obstructed shot I, if uh, Nick wanted to activate his MC-80 right now. But did, Oh, Nick is activating his MC-80? No, I don't think so. I think Norm's just trying to figure out if he's safe okay. enough to activate something else first. He's not. You do not, I do not take that. You don't want, yeah, you don't want to take that. Not well, over. I mean, you may have to play a little bit risky if you're going to hope to win. Because what, what I would, yeah, what, what I... What I would probably do is, Nick, is that I, I, I may be inclined to activate my flotillas first to do squadron commands, actually, and push my squads as far away as possible. I'm a greedy player, <laughs> so I would go after yeah. the demo. I'm also not a great player. Some, sometimes I'm not a great player, but I would, I, you know, I agree with Victor. He's totally right in that, in that factor, but... I am kind of of the opinion at this point, I'd be shaking my boots a little because I'm, I'm not sure of the score. Uh, if I, Again, I'm sorry if I'm speaking as if I was in Nick's uh, shoes. I might just take that shot at the demo and try and pop it, but I'm, I'm you know. There's a reason these guys are at the top table tonight and I'm sitting here commentating, so. We'll, we'll see if that happens, but. Maybe, I, I, and conversely, I think Nix understands that those Zs might just go and he has to take yeah. a big risk. So here's a squadron command by the, the Victory Star Destroyer. Four activations. Mm. Oh. oh, now he's switching targets. I think he's good, trying to go after this, the GR-75. Oh, smart play. You've got Merrick Steele. You've got uh, Colonel Jendon. Uh, your, your opponent has pushed his squads far away enough that they can't counterattack. Yeah. Okay, so actually he's starting with uh, he's starting with Reimer, one hit. Do you, do you scatter? No, he just takes it. I can't this is, scatter this is huge. This is, this is a huge activation here. Yeah, Merrick with the follow up. For some reason, again, I always forget speed five <laughs> out of range. Yeah. Nope. Nope. And so actually, uh, so Norm and I were discussing the the role of. Uh, Major Rhymer in an Imperial Squadron list, and like you know, especially with the range nerf, a lot of people have stopped putting him in lists. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's I've always found that, like, in, in addition to the baiting your opponent to come to you, like, sometimes you just need that little bit of a you know, oomph. So it looks like oh, it was Sloan got the scatter, Sloan got the scatter, and here comes the crit. So, depowered armament on a flotilla. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, so again, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, at first, I was saying, as an Imperial player and an over, someone who overreacted, Reimer was dead, long life Reimer. And then I brought him today, and I was like, yep, he's not dead. 
I wish he wasn't yep. nerfed. But again, my bias showing through. Oh, he got the oh, he got the accuracy. Uh, got it's it. two accuracies. Defense tokens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got a compartment yeah. fire. Cannot ready his defense tokens to. So get he that. Hit. Oh, and yep. He's got one more activation. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hero, yeah. Yeah. So I think he, he would have been out of range if it wasn't for, for Reimer. Figure out his activation. Does he does he have a ship that he can activate? Uh, yep, Jen, Jenin getting that die fighter. Oh, just checking. All right, black, oh, black squadron. Hero black squadron. Here we go. So that is twenty points, right? That was the objective yep. Uh, ship. Yep, that was the objective and ship. That was was it was it a naked JR seventy five that just died? I gotta go check. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to confirm that. Yeah. I believe it was probably just the naked one, but still, that's twenty points that we weren't even considering because reasons. Yeah, so it was confirmed a naked one. So that's still 18 points, but that's 18 points that he doesn't have to kill squadrons anymore. He doesn't have to take that risk. Oh, yes. Yeah, Audio Weasel. Yes, he is. I, we would totally agree. The Rhymer nerf wasn't huge. But uh, originally, again, my bias showing through. I was like, oh, Rhymer's dead. I can't play Rhymer anymore because it's just going to get engaged and I can't do my crazy Rhymer shenanigans. Okay. But yeah, no, no, we totally agree. Totally agree that it's, uh, it's fine now. Absolutely. Still doubles the range of his bombers. No, no arguments here. I was just, uh, <laughs> it was huge for you as well, Just Knight. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> it nerfed the one list I had success with. Yeah. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. I, I totally agree with that. But, you know, as um, all good Armada players do, we just have to adapt to all the changes and find something else we like. So, Norm is Norm is here with Rhymer. He's made it work. We had a, myself and another, um, another player brought something similar to that. And I saw in a couple Christian. of... Christian. Christian. It was the 2016 Armada... Canadian national champion. Yeah, yeah, that was a fun game. This this is a crazy game. Like I just, um, yeah, it's crazy. So, um, Nick's uh, activating Gazanti. Uh, sorry, we're just getting be able to uh, getting a little distracted with what's going on on the side here. Um, so Nick is shooting some AA. Uh, he shoots. This is the first time I've seen him shoot black dice. Um, one damage. So he's firing out the front. Okay, so you're just uh, players are just confirming uh, arcs of what can be hit. So un unfortunately, I think this was I, again. I could be wrong, but I think this is one of Nick's downfalls. He's not properly using his AA flotilla screens to. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to remember if he actually did have opportunities to fire with his black dice and didn't end up doing them. Yeah. But uh, all Norm needs to do now is kill one Z95 and run, or or just survive the last uh, the last uh, counterattack. Mm -hmm. 
The Imperial Admiral is uh, Sloan. slow. Yeah. yeah. And, and Sloan is basically the reason why there are so many dead flotillas. Absolutely. Yeah. It, well, and Merrick. Mer Mer Merrick and Sloan, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're peas, peas in a pod. They're made for each other. Like, I, I really don't want to play any other defenders other than Merrick Steel uh, with Sloan. Like, I know that Sloan makes defenders have a 100% uh, mm -hmm. efficacy with their anti-ship die, because it's a one blue die, obviously, with bomber. Um, but I, I just think that, like, you have Merrick and you have Jendon. You basically have that's, two Merricks. Yeah, yeah you have so two that's, Merrick. that's, that's all you need. My concern always was uh, AA, AA issues with uh, flying ties into, I don't know, the side of yep. an MC-80. But, or in front of an ISD. Yep. Um, however, you know, I've come to appreciate ties, and there goes a Z. Now, okay, so now it, we are, we have Nick has, has to, has to, has to one-shot this demolish. Yep. Or potentially pick off some more TIE fighters, but yeah. probably has to one-shot this demolish. That was, that was a whiff, I think. Yep. So, okay, I just want to see if it's mathematically possible to kill Demolisher. Um, so Nick will be throwing um, six red dice, minus one for the obstruction. Yep. Um, he's going to have to go through two shields with XI-7s and the evade. And the brace. And the brace. I mean, he does have intel officer, but this is but, turn five. I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Depending what speed that that uh, demolisher is, it might bump mm -hmm. the victory. Maybe. Sure, sure, yeah, that makes sense. I I, I can't see Norm yeah. running. I can't see Norm doing it. So mathematically, I think it's yep. impossible uh, to one shot the demolisher because yeah. you need to get six damage yeah. between. Sorry. P PT-106, sorry. Uh, the Demolisher hasn't activated, so the Defiance title will not take effect for the attack. Yeah. yeah. Oh. The first Z didn't killing something. Okay, so that, is that TIE Fighter not dying was huge, because that would have swung, swung the uh, momentum back in Nick's favor. Not only actually would have swung it back in his favor, but even if Norm killed one more Z after that, the, the score would be tied, and if the game end with a tie score, uh, Nick would win because he was a second player. Now, I'm assuming Norm doesn't kill any other squadrons, yep. but this is happening, so... Yeah, you've nailed that dress. That's uh, pretty much all these... Yep, yep. That, that's exactly the uh, pickle build. So this was just squadron, squadron tr uh, phase here, I think. Mm. Now, with if there's an engine, I'm, I'm wondering if there's an engine text play here. Yeah. Um, can he ha, has this uh, Gazanti moved in the middle here? That I I, I, uh, I don't know. If it if it has moved, then he could potentially fork the Gazanti yep. and uh, maybe even fork the back of the yeah. VSD and demo. So oh, is he just taking AA shots? He's taking AA shots? Yep. Oh. So here's Reimer, AA shot. And Merrick. Oh, I don't nope. think... I know. So, yeah, yeah. So the, the previous attacks were all obstructed sure. by a station, but now... And and his uh, Gazanti. Yeah. Or sorry, not Gazanti, uh, GR-75. Yep. Oh, no. I think he whiffed on everything. Yeah. Blue dice have been not good this game for anybody. I mean that that placement of station, that placement of that station has been brutal too because, um, you know now Norm just like flies all his Tie Fighters there and just like dances around it, heals some damage, you know, gets gets obstructed from the AA. So, yeah. Oh, engine text. Oh, this is. And that Gazanti probably still flies out of the way. Yeah. Flies into the front arc. Yep. The question is, does that 
does that demo get away? Does that de does that demo have? If he has a nav, he mm -hmm. might be able to move around. Yeah, might be just a little. Although I think they just measured arc, and it it, it looks like they're not like the the demo is not in the side arc of that uh, MC80. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, Nick Brown is not an erratic player. He is a very good player. Like he's he's been playing against uh, some of the best that Canada has to offer. And he ended up with the 24 points. Like him and Norm had the highest scoring uh, tournaments. Sorry, the, the highest scoring Swiss rounds. If he, even if he yeah. seems erratic right now. Sure. And, and the other thing you have to you have to keep in mind is that they started at 10:30 this morning. It's now 9:30. Uh, there wasn't enough time to give a proper break. So these people have been playing Armada for pretty much 11 hours nonstop. Right now, I, I, yeah. there's been little minor mistakes on both sides again that yeah. we can see a lot easier here. But this is this is a tough. Having played through this, this is tough. Yeah. Now yeah. Uh, Norm. Oh, Norm yeah, now is, it's Norm's turn to run. Norm. Ooh. Oh, yep. Yeah. Here comes the uh, here comes the placeholder. That's a neat design. I should get yeah. one of those. Oh yeah, uh, I think um, uh, Paul Paella. He came from Buffalo. I think yeah, one of his some. one of the guys who does like a bunch of like uh, Armada, I guess paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he makes the, these things. They're really useful. So we're just gonna get rid of the. Uh, I think we're just gonna get rid of the number indicating the objective oh, ship. And he makes it. Anymore. He makes it. Wow. So, Victor. Question for you: How many yeah. times have you run Demolisher off the board? I've never run Demolisher off the board. Actually. You're a better Demolisher <laughs> player than I have. <laughs> now, no, not that I think yeah. Norm is going to do that now. But I mean, maybe he forgot to dial in a navigate nav. command for his last action. I mean, th th things are possible there. <laughs> but right now, it's a one-point difference. Yeah. So yeah, squadron phase, turn five. Um, um, sorry, um, Nick, yep. Nick is the only one with unactivated squadrons. That's right. So it's Z against this TIE fighter. Uh, yeah, the demo's close to the edge. I guess it depends on whether or not Norm has a navigate command to... Uh, Z is going at speed three. Oh, there goes his TIE fighter. So that is a regular TIE fighter. That Another eight points. Down. So, advantage Nick. Oh, he's engaging Saber. Yeah, with the nav, he should be able yeah. to do an inside turn. Yep. But he is still going speed three, so... Oh, and you can slow down, do an inside turn. I think oh, he'll yeah. be fine, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know. I, I have uh, flashbacks of running my first demolisher off the table. Sure, yeah. yeah. Got super greedy with concentrate fires. Forgot I had a token. It ended off the board. And then the token fell in front of me. And I'm like, well, right. it's too late now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Final turn. Uh, yeah, 20, 20 so, minutes on the clock, but I don't think they're going to need it. Norm has done an amazing job at cutting this pickle. Yeah, and I don't think Nick realizes he's actually won here. Yeah. Play on. Uh, uh, players asking for uh, point calculation. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't know. I'm, I'm trying not to let the uh, spectators influence the decision making yeah. process of the players. I mean, to be fair, all three of those guys are driving with me home, so they might be a little tired, but again, yep. we got to keep it. Last turn, it's gonna be tough. Mm. 
Man, you know, again, me being a silly player, I would have <laughs> hoped for a greedy smash the pickle into everything and everybody just collides in a big glorious death ball. But this, yep. this is why, you know, really smart play, defensive play may be boring, but it, yep. it wins games. And there's a lot of... I, I think it's very educational too, right? I mean, it might be it might be relatively exciting to, uh, yeah, it, it might be relatively exciting to just like smash two uh, squadron balls together, but like you know we're, we're seeing a we're seeing a scenario here where like like literally every squadron attack matters. Yes. You know? Yep. You know, most of the time, like at the turn six, like especially in a casual game, you know, people have just like figured out what's going on and be like, yeah, hey, hey, this thing's doing this, this thing's yeah, doing exactly. this. Yeah, exactly. You want to just call it, but uh, still close. Or yeah. even um, just one side squadrons just evaporated, and you're like, well, I guess I lose because you have your squadrons are still really good at hitting right. ships potentially. Yeah. Uh, here's the attack. So oh, ooh, there goes a Z. There goes a Z. Oh, he's going for a flotilla. Oh, the spatter gets the sorry. spatter. <laughs> it's a spat. The spatter. Scatter. Scatter yeah. gets spent. There's too yeah. much alliteration. Sloane's yeah. spending slat. Oh my god. Sloane. She's spattering the scatter. <laughs> spattering the scatter. <laughs> spattering the scatter. Jeez. And now we have the the players commentating the commentators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I, I want to be really quiet for this next point. If the sure. if we've been doing the math correctly. Nick is going to win this game. If nothing else changes, Nick is the second player. In the case of a tie, the second player wins the game. And it doesn't matter if it's a 6 5 or a 5 oh, He's doing a squadron command. Yeah. He could kill some more tie fighters. Yeah. Actually, secure this victory. Do you believe in red dice? I believe in red dice. I mean, Nick made me believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have not played enough games against Max. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my. Oh. Slow. What? Swarm? Swarm? One hit. Not Who's enough. Against? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now, yeah, you can't shoot at any of the squadrons because they're obstructed. Yeah. Thank you, the, Caribbean yeah. Engine. Thank you for that. Say that three times fast. Yeah, same. If we need to title the video, yeah. I, if, if if Canadian Nationals final isn't yeah. getting out, <laughs> that could be the subtitle. Oh, this is some very tough decisions. Now, so here's a potential play. Get that GR-75 as close to your MC-80 mm -hmm. as possible. and Just maybe, to protect it, right? Well, protect it or even... I don't know if he... I don't know how much damage you're on those other squadrons if you yeah. can potentially kill them, but... Oh, this is, this is so tense. It's just Nick verifying that uh, Jendon is, in fact, a speed three uh, squadron. anything this game we're gonna have within our group uh the toronto meta as well as the kitchener waterloo meta which yep you know it's kind of the same thing um we're gonna this is we're gonna, the torsog meta torsog yeah. meta yeah it's the big mega city of mega uh, city. kitchener waterloo guelph toronto i think mean, cambridge Saga. yeah everything in between anyway um but this i think a lot of people are going to be looking at this if you want to learn how to really think about your squadron game mm -hmm. um you could watch this Yes. Potentially with our commentary on or off, that's debatable. For sure, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this has been a very, very interesting squadron game, and yep, yeah. So, I, I, I honestly, I've never seen as close a game in in a premier level armada tournament as I'm witnessing right now. Oh, um, the yeah. the where Norm One's Worlds, it was also pretty yeah. close too. If you yeah. remember that, that was that was that was a nail biter, yep. but it wasn't a tie score, so. 
was yep. not close when he won Gen Con. He was not close when he won Gen Con. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, and he's going, potentially going for a kill. Oh, Merrick the carry. Carries Carrick Steel. Car Two, oh, yeah. he whiffed. He whiffed. Oh, he didn't whiff. I mean, he still had to spend the scatter, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, he right. burned it. But, but no, no. Did, the, like, no damage went through it? Nope, nope. Because uh, he's he made uh, he spent a scatter with Sloan in a previous okay. squadron activation. Okay. Now he's activating Merrick. Uh, he didn't roll an accuracy, but he forced Nick to yeah. scatter now. Oh, he might. Oh, uh, with Jenjin, that might die. Yeah. If, if this Rhymer has to hit. Or Rhymer, uh, yeah. Tie Bomber. Yeah, PT106, thank you so much for that. Oh, whiff. Oh, it whiffed. Oh my god, it whiffed. I think that, that Gazanti's ear. Okay. That was a BST. Uh, sorry, I keep calling him Gazanti's as an Imperial now, player. Now, he didn't activate four there because he could only relay two of them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Jendon, I think that uh, GR75, assuming it has no damage, which it doesn't look it like, doesn't it doesn't have any damage, it's gonna live. I, if he had a, did he have a shield in the rear as well? I, I, it's hard to tell from this angle, but... No, he, he got rid of the shield. Okay. It was... Uh, well, actually, no, I don't know. No, I think he does have a shield. Okay. Okay, so I'm overreacting a little, okay. but, it, but it lives. Yeah. So it's going to come down to those TIE fighters over in the corner. If they kill that Z. Yeah. Oh, my God. That red... <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, my. I, this, yeah. is, this is a even... A very spicy, spicy. I I think. I I'm glad I got this match on camera. Yes. I know it's late. Uh, we know, you know it, there's we see, nothing. We see the hotel workers tearing down the tables right now. Mm -hmm. Our poor uh, <laughs> our poor store manager for Fomorrowin Games is waiting for us to finish up. So I feel a little bit bad, but uh, I I have we haven't seen I, handfuls of dice. I don't chart. think I have ever seen like a game end like this. Yeah. I mean, and you, you know what? To add a little bit more drama to the situation, like Norm tells me that uh, the the MC80 is, it's his, uh, it's his Moby Dick. I mean, it's figuratively. It's it, it makes sense. I mean, it's like a big it giant a white whale. Yeah. 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 So oh, here, this is. Here we go into the Z. I think right. It has to be the Z. Oh, wait, where is yeah. this going? Oh no, oh, no, no, no this is Z into the Tie Fighter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, VCX? VCX. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, Blue dice have not been good this year. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Power slide. <laughs> Blue dice. At... Yep. All right, so that's the demo. I think that's a demo. Try, I don't know, try, a try not to fly off the... I think the comms net. Oh, the... <laughs> Is he blocking? <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't going off the board. He might have been going off oh the board. Oh my god. No reason to take a chance. Tactical blocking of yourself. This has happened twice this game. Yeah, it's true. It, 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 it's capping. It's like it started with a block, ending with a block. And I'm going to be a little smug here. Just, just to be sure the blocking ship doesn't fly off the board itself. Oh, that, that's true. <laughs> okay, I'm at, well, hold on. Let me, let me finish this maneuver before I say something silly <laughs> and embarrass myself. Jeez. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> this is why. I f this is oh next level. God. This is. <laughs> Nor Norm's playing football here. Yeah. This is uh. This is next level Toronto plays. Yeah. <laughs> if he <hasn't> <laughs> <laughs> Norm said he'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Players are just realizing, oh my god, that demo could have been off the board. And, and we're just realizing that too. Oh my god. So I think. I think yeah. So yeah, I, I, I don't think I don't think Norm dialed in. That's why he did that. I don't think Norm dialed in a nav command because if he if, even if he had just had a token, that wasn't enough to turn sharply enough into the into the side of the board. Yeah, it was just the whatever. Oh my God, the pickle cut it all yep. day. 
job in field. Oh, squ oh, squadron. Yep. Okay. He's gonna try to finish off. Yeah, try to finish off. Do that. the blue dice. Do I don't know how much is left. I'm okay. Do you believe in blue? Oh, four. Is that it? Is oh, it? Yeah. All right. Seven points to Norm. <laughs> what a chance. Oh, this guy slow rolled the nap command. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. The, the manor. Uh, ram. Here we go. DM. That's it. Congratulations. Congratulations. By a total of seven points.